Yeah, all right. I have a stopwatch. I'm going to get you pregnant. You tell me when it's a baby <laughs> with a soul loved by Jesus. I just came on you. It's now. It's now. It's when I came on you. Yeah. And we literally get the line, well, how is eight weeks different than 24 weeks? And how she's like, are those two um, numbers different, Heath? 12? <laughs> I don't get the question. Twelve? No, it's not twelve. It's you did sixteen. The, 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 it's sixteen. 16. You got it wrong. Okay, <laughs> but it's 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 a number. Is the difference? God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if I am going to hell, I want a head start. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. You know who? Fuck this movie. <laughs> this is unconscionable. I'm so mad. Let's just fucking get it over with. Eli had this whole big thing in, in, in the A segment that he wanted to read, and he's like, hey, I just want to put the facts out there. Before people, you know, like new Boo, listeners turn nerd, off fuck this movie before before new listeners turn off the show for us saying fuck. And I'm like, dude, we're not going to make it to midway through the A That's segment fair. without saying fuck. <laughs> Are you <clears throat> kidding me? Did you see this fucking movie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And speaking of Eli, he's 81 miles to my right and is my bad friend. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am amazing. Noah, I've been doing air box. I don't even know how boxing work, but I've been doing it. This is why we do the job. Look, most of our job is just <laughs> st like uneducated people just shambling their way in front of a VHS camcorder they got when <laughs> grandma died and being like, I sh sure do loves the Jesus more than I didn't before. And, and we're like, boo, you're bad at making movies. And that's fine. It's got its place. But when we get to take off these just purely evil things, oh, it's why I do the job. I woke up. This is 100% true. I saw this movie. I went to bed. I woke up at three in the morning, stark awake, woke up, sprang out of bed just to yell about how much I hated this movie <laughs> to nobody. I have been, oh, I have I rarely so questioned my life choices more than I did walking out of this theater happy that I got to see this movie, right? Like they, professionally, I was happy this movie existed. As a human, I am just devastated that this movie existed but professionally i was stoked yeah they had like six million dollars of budget to do this oh, people put Jesus money into this fucking christ <laughs> all right so Fuck. tell us heath what did they put six million dollars into we watched unplanned it's the story of fuck this movie <laughs> it's unconscionable it's the story of the heroes who stand along the fence of Planned oh. Parenthood locations <laughs> and harass women getting medical care. I was in a theater by myself, <laughs> oh. pacing around, yelling at the screen like a crazy person. That sounds so Nobody much better. Nobody was there. I'm it, so I, mad. It was nut. At, at one point, I knocked on the wall under the projector booth, trying to get the projector <laughs> person to come down and, and apologize <laughs> and explain the hate crime they were abetting. I'm so mad. Oh, God. Oh. It really was. Oh, well, you know what? That's not my job. We've got a guy for that. Eli, how bad was this movie? Oh, okay. Well, if you ever watched people harassing rape victims at an abortion clinic and been confused as to who is the bad guy, you will love <sighs> this movie. Um, okay. Wait, we're going to talk about where I was. We're going to talk about where we were. I'm yeah. sorry. No, we'll it's get a bad there. movie. We'll get there. Okay. So this, and we should say right up front, this is the story of Abby Johnson. And I was trying to think of a way to encapsulate who Abby Johnson is quickly for you. We're going to spend the whole episode talking about who Abby Johnson is, but just so you know who we're talking about going in. And this is what I came up with. From time to time on this show, we like to make jokes and, but amongst ourselves, we make jokes about how one of these days we're going to quit the show and pretend that we found God and make the real money, right? Because that's what like we would do if we had absolutely no morals or ethics whatsoever. We'd be like, Oh, I found God. Atheism was wrong the whole time. They've been dying for somebody to do that. 
I would imagine you do the same thing when you work at Planned Parenthood. Once in a while, your boss tells you you got to work overtime and you didn't want to work overtime. You're not going to get the day off you wanted or whatever. And you walk away grumbling. I'm going to go tell them abortion protesters, you guys juggle fetuses in the back room. (laughs) I would imagine that's like a standard joke at Planned Parenthood. Abby Johnson is the bitch that actually did that. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. That hometown friend on your Facebook who's always like, hate my life, hate my job, FML post. She's that, but also a native informant on women. If you could combine those things, if it's essential oil sales meets if fat lies could be a person is what she is. So the worst. And a movie. And a movie. Yeah. Please sue me, Abby Johnson. I can't tell you how badly I want you to sue me. I don't want to. Please. Well, please sue us uh, and I'm kickbox a- me. Yeah, <laughs> there, yeah, right, right. If she gets sentenced to go into the ring with one of us, that would be. I have no idea how to kickbox. I'll fucking learn. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> I want that I montage. I will will myself. I want that me. montage so goddamn bad. Keep going, Super Abby, Saint. make that montage hair. happen. <laughs> it's in your hands. <laughs> I already hurt myself thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, obviously. Pull the hammy. It happens. All right. So, of course, now, this is one of those rare instances where we went out and saw an R-rated movie. Woo! Right? I think this is our third R-rated movie, if you don't count our monthly Patreon-only secular bonus episodes that you can get by going to patreon.com slash godawful. Um, guys, I, after watching it, do you guys have any guesses as to why this might have earned an R rating? Oh, oh, because hmm. an angel at the MPAA was like, hey, you know how we keep this piece of shit from being seen by a bunch of children <laughs> on church groups? Bloop, R rating. Bloop. And then she high-fived herself, that mysterious angel, and walked out of whatever weird tiny room they make these decisions <laughs> in. Oh, two votes for that. If there's that person in the world, mwah. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, okay. I was thinking it was the baby bits like okay so you remember <laughs> the, that scene at the end of kill bill one where she said you know the, the, the house of blue leaves and she takes out the crazy 88 and they have that pan shot where she's telling them to leave their limbs because they belong to her now and you have that pan shot where there's just legs and arms sitting everywhere this entire movie like at the Planned Parenthood clinic that's the backdrop but with baby parts <laughs> you yeah. know Carly Fiorina's nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> you know how Tarantino doesn't have fetuses? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> something along those lines. Yeah. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with best worst. Forgetting that terrorism is bad. Uh, and then realizing during your movie <laughs> and, and they just keep going and then so, ignoring it. Yeah. Yep. They just ignore it. So again, this is a pro-life propaganda movie and they accidentally wrote in a planned parenthood doctor getting shot in the head by a Christian terrorist. And obviously the movie itself at that point became uh, mentally paralyzed. It And everyone just like turns the camera at the same time. And they're like, what? Should, <laughs> should we vamp? Do you want us to sing a fucking song? <laughs> the fuck is happening? And scene. What? Scene? <laughs> Don't say And they scene. just move on. <laughs> they sure do. Yep. Yeah, a lot of that, that like, well, you know, but if the terrorism is motivated correctly, a lot of that apologetic showing up in this film. I was going to go with best worst hard sell, and I know there's so many other things I could have gone with, but there's a point in this movie where the main character is hard selling abortions and I could sell abortions so much better. Planned Parenthood. Talk to me. Here's my pitch. Hey, fly anywhere from anywhere. It's like that, but always plus crippling <laughs> debt and ceaseless disappointment here. Sign the paper. Yeah, no, no, they'll get you in. They'll get you. In. Trust me. There's not a line. Oh, Okay, I am going to, there's so much I want it. We could, this is a nine hour episode, everybody. It very well could be a nine hour episode. It needs to not be. It really needs to not be. Uh, Go ahead. We're going to go with best worst moment for me to laugh really loudly (laughs) all by myself in a crowded movie theater full of children. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) We'll get to it. I could have gone with that one too. You had a crowded theater of children? Oh, we'll get to it, Heath. We will get to it. See, this is why we need... No, go ahead. All right. 
Well, now that we've started this episode, we have to carry it to term. I am in Georgia after all. So we'll be back after this quick break to dig into all the R-rated baby parts that are unplanned. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick, here to tell you about stapling roadkill to your forehead. Eli, what? It's true. 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35. But if you find a big enough raccoon and a powerful enough staple gun, nobody can tell. Um, uh, I can super tell. There's just like a ton of blood. <laughs> Easy to tell. That's right, Heath. Now, a ton of people would tell you to go to forhims.com, the one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. But why do that when this squirrel was free? Oh, There's at least like a million reasons. Dude, I'm going to be sick. Sure. Hims.com connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat hair loss and products are shipped directly to your door. But all this armadillo cost was a shovel and a walk around the highway. Uh, an armadillo doesn't even make it look like you have hair. What no, are you doing? It's armor plating. <laughs> That's right, Heath. So if you Keep want to order now, GAM listeners get a trial month of Hims for just $5 today, right now while supplies last. Restrictions apply. See website for full details. This would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or pharmacy. Just go to forhims.com slash gam. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash gam. Forhims.com slash gam does seem like a way better option. <laughs> That's right, Heath. Let's let hmm. them decide. Uh, nope. Nope. Please go to forhims. Yeah. Or not. But do, though. Do. Go to forhims. Not whatever else. From the makers of Heaven is for Real, Miracles from Heaven, and Unplanned. I'm an evil atheist, and I'm going to eat your dick. Oh, no! Yep. Comes the realization that if your entire worldview is based on a talking ghost, based on a true story, kind of loses its meaning. Angel wings? How do you grow those? With Grandma's old Bible, of course. Because if you're going to be full of shit, go big. Barack Obama? I'm here to steal the sword out of Jesus' mouth. This summer, liars. I'm a lizard person. I knew it! Yep. And we're back for the breakdown. But before we get to that, this was a field trip. And normally we'll take a minute to share with a our listeners, a few of our pre-movie experiences after those. So, fellas, I drove through rural highways for two hours and 15 minutes. Either way, how were your pre-movie experiences? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked, Noah. My theater was filled with teenagers on a church trip. Oh, no. Wow. So, I come in. I am the only non-member of this church. It is literally, the whole theater is full except for me. There is a monk there, like a guy with the bald paint and the dress. He's in the audience. There's the parents in the front and then this big group of teenage kids. And it's the signed seat theater. So I'm like between two <laughs> teenagers. That's going to be important. Very end of the episode. Wow. Don't forget. And then the leader lady during Marina Marudos, Menundos is trying to talk. And the leader <laughs> lady gets up and starts to give a like, just st say crazy lies about abortion to sort of introduce the movie. And so I go, nope. And then I turn around <laughs> and hush the guy behind me. And he was, and everyone blamed him and they were livid at him. They were like, he was so, that guy is going to find and murder me, but it was a million percent worth it. And it was this huge moment in the theater that when I yelled, no, because she was, she was like, and now they just made it legal in New York to kill a baby after it's born. And I just went, no. <laughs> and then I, I turned around and was like, shh, at the guy who was very clearly not at fault, but cool. they all looked because I was turning around. And then I turned back and she was like, also, we bought everyone popcorn, but I had ruined the moment. I had ruined her popcorn <laughs> announcement by pointing out she was a liar. <laughs> Did you also dox the guy by saying his Twitter handle is at Heath Enright? Because I have like 25 new things based on something that happened last yeah, night. Yeah, oh God, Jesus. When Eli gets in an argument on Twitter, we all know about it in the morning. Look. Uh, look. <laughs> let's not look. Should I even Should I even click on it? No, I don't click, think I'm yeah, click on it. no it's not. Probably, click on it. It's probably not worth it. 
So I saw this in a more or less the, uh, full theater. Of course, mine were all, I went at like one thirty on Friday afternoon. So mine were all retirees, like super <laughs> Christian retirees. I was the youngest person in the theater by, oh, I don't know, 24 years. Weird. And uh, yeah, no, I had, I had fun. Like they all sit at the front. It's amazing. That's terrifying. Okay. So for me, first of all, I had to drive into goddamn Kentucky again. That was terrifying. <laughs> And um, there was supposed to be one other person in my theater when I bought the tickets and you, you know, you get the assigned seats. Yeah. I was like, uh -huh. weird. There's one other person at this 1025 p.m. showing <laughs> on a Thursday night. That's weird. I wonder what's going to happen. And then it was completely empty when I got there and I was really mad. I was angry because like I was expecting something. I started wondering, like. Who the fuck was that other single person <laughs> who goes seeing this movie by themselves at 10.30 p.m.? And I'm so curious who that was. And then I got angrier because I was like expected some camaraderie or something. <laughs> and, and then I was like, okay, well, if nobody shows up, I'm going to like Norman Bates, a Christian couple next to me or something. I, I got really mad. <laughs> nobody showed up. Well, okay, so I should probably introduce the couple behind me right off the bat because they will be characters in my review. So I've got this 60-something couple sitting behind me, just lot, ready to yell amen at a moment's notice, right? Like, they weren't going to be the first to do it, but if anyone else amen. in the theater yelled amen, <laughs> if I had yelled amen, they'd have been in, right? Um, and also... You could have been like, USA, whole train <laughs> right away. I'm so good. You could have killed them. Oh if my you just God. kept starting the chant, they would have eventually oh, passed. Yes. I was planning to start that chant at the end of the movie, but I was goddamn by myself, so right, I couldn't do it. Right, right, right. Oh, I totally could have started a USA chant in this room. <laughs> I missed out. <laughs> All right. Um, just really quick, one other really, really rough moment. I'm watching the previews and then i realized like wow i cannot express how sad it is that i've seen all these christian movie <laughs> previews yep. several times already i'm crushing it in life it was rough <laughs> hey hey we are thank you yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> unfortunately we have to talk about unplanned which begins <laughs> with even the even the fucking narrators apologizing for us having to watch this movie right <laughs> right away the, like it, okay first of all it starts on the words based on a true story somehow they managed to sneak that in without an asterisk or a citation <laughs> needed tag or anything it's amazing how how they that's not a legally protected term you just <laughs> no, throw that in front of any movie can't yeah. you <laughs> literally first thing that happens based on a true story already lying you're yep. already <laughs> yep. like nobody even spoke yet your first title card was literally a lie yes. <laughs> zero seconds in lying it, you wait the only way to lie earlier was to, like to tell us that this was brought to us by paramount right <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then and then the narrator the first spoken word is the narrator saying my story isn't an easy one to hear or watch or believe. Well, she doesn't add those <laughs> other two, but that's implied. But yeah, they, they, like the, oh. the narrator is over and over again warning us, this ain't going to be pretty, y'all. We actually <laughs> got an R rating. It kind of fucked us. Really need you to sneak your kids into this somehow. <laughs> uh, you will see some raw fetus, like <laughs> raw, but sneak your kids in, please. <laughs> yeah, Went exactly. to the local sushi place to get our special effects. It's not... <laughs> I said we should Google how big a 13-week feed is. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> it's really easy. You can it's find very, out. Very, very small sizes. as it turns out. All right. So then we, we open on some mom and daughter shenanigans. Uh, this is where yep. we're going to meet Abby Johnson and her husband and child. Played by Ashley Bratcher, who listeners will remember for... War Room and not the fucking thing else. <laughs> oh, Ashley that was Bratcher. her? She was the lead? Yeah. yeah. And uh. it has not been that long and she has aged badly. She is living proof that moisturizer cannot cover your black heart. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Bratcher looks like someone brought an old saddle to the makeup counter at Macy's. She is not... <laughs> Wait, not a good look through this movie. <laughs> My note here was, fuck these beautiful people. That's kind of mad. <laughs> Like, oh, I her husband see, was... I want to see, like, yeah, the husband was even oh, more attractive. Like, yeah. I want to see dad bod in a movie. Just show me some fucking <laughs> love handles. Just be realistic about it. 
some drool and some sweat patch on your sheet when you wake up. Like, just be honest. <laughs> I haven't people. seen this. I've, I've seen Abby Johnson. I haven't seen her husband, but something tells me this is not a very good analog. <laughs> oh, she definitely was at the casting and like, this person looks just like me. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. So Bob has to leave from her shenanigans with the daughter and go to work. Daughter is super disappointed. She wants to play tea party. Hmm. But mom, though, works at an abortion clinic. She's always busiest on Saturdays because them drunken sluts really go to town on Friday nights, you see. They love their Saturday abortions. Yeah. Ugh. Gross. It's an add-on to a Friday night Uber now. It's like, would you like to be picked up tomorrow for your abortion? <laughs> yeah. They... <laughs> XXL or Planned Parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we get the opening credits. Yes, we're already this pissed off before the opening credits, uh, which is bucolic Americana B-roll. And it occurred to me as I'm watching mm. this, this could be like our safety net business, guys. We could just like film shittiness and send it to Pureflix for their credit sequences. That could be a full-time gig. Ooh, I like it. Just see what they'll put into a movie, like a steaming pile of dog feces. And just like, oh, look, made it into God's Not Dead 7. Here we go. <laughs> Pay up, Heath. No, you said the feces wouldn't make it into the movie. Come on. <laughs> My nickel now. Yeah. And during this bucolic Americana, we're getting some music. Uh, and the song, I think, is called... Uh, this movie is going to change everything or something very <laughs> close to that. Yes. It's so dumb. And by the way, uh, just a little trivia for you. This movie got denied so many times trying to get songs for their soundtrack. <laughs> oh, Every I label bet. was like, oh, the, the anti Planned Parenthood movie. Um, Respectfully, dear sirs or ma'ams, go fuck yourself. No, yeah. we will not give you any songs. They they couldn't get Cindy Lauper. Girls just want to have fun, which I'm very happy about. They couldn't get One Direction. They tried to get one of their songs. They couldn't get Oingo Boingo. It was rough for them. <laughs> you can't get Danny Elfman into your movie soundtrack. You're doing something yeah, wrong. No, when that's... Oingo Boingo tells you to fuck yourself, you're the problem. <laughs> There's a lot of red flags. There should have been a lot of red flags for everyone involved in this film. Oh, who's, who's, who docks themselves as part of this, strangely, right here at the beginning. Yeah. All right. So now it's time for the narrator to tell us about that time she realized abortion was evil. And it all started when she went to work for Planned Parenthood for full time for most of a decade. I love the opening line here, too. She goes, I've been asked a million times, are you really that gullible? I'm like, Dude, she's a fucking Christian. Yes. Yeah. I mean, clearly, yeah. This is, clearly that's her the religion fine. is based on that word. That's <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. And the first thing that happens, she pulls into Planned Parenthood and there's a signed parking at the <laughs> clinic out in the middle of the suburbs with plenty of space in Texas, too. Like maybe the patients get the good spots if you're going to do that. Though, either way. <laughs> Are you serious? Some girl pulls in, 13-year-old. She's I'm made sorry. it halfway across. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You're no. going to need to go to the B lot and take the <laughs> shuttle. That's <laughs> my <Fuck> spot. You. <laughs> so. Jesus. Also, just the ominous way they zoom in on the Planned Parenthood sign, I, I had to bite through my goddamn lower lip not to laugh in this room full of children. <laughs> it might as well, like, creak in the wind and have an old farmer, like, <laughs> pointing to a pet cemetery next to it. Oh, if there was a fetus version of Pet Cemetery, this oh, this would be it. There. This would what be cemetery. It. All right, so okay, so she's at the clinic one day, and they needed help with an abortion. She's got to hold the ultrasound thing for the doctor so he can see what he's killing. Now, I want to point out right off the bat in her memoir, she describes this as a thirteen-week abortion. This thing would be approximately the size of a pea pod. It would weigh an ounce. It would be approximately as sentient as a mentally damaged goldfish. <laughs> okay? But that's what we're supposed to be sympathetic to, right? This fucking three-inch-long goldfish fetus. Well, and we do not see a three-inch-long <laughs> goldfish. No. We see, I would approximate, a four-year-old child. <laughs> <laughs> and the way this baby fights on its way down the hose 
this is absurd. If, if this wasn't scary propaganda meant to scare women out of their rights, this would be the funniest thing I'd ever oh, seen. I laughed by myself Me at too. this point. Me Absolutely. too, and I was I not by myself. I was it was c- nuts. Yeah, the, the the fetus is doing like dive rolls around <laughs> yes! the uterus like yes! a fucking ninja. Of, <laughs> it eventually, it, it with finally. Yeah, it does some blocks. It does some like <laughs> neo dodges. Eventually, it just gives up and yells freedom like Braveheart. It's so dumb. <laughs> Suck my fat dick <laughs> and just gets sucked out by a giant hose. It's so stupid. Oh, okay. ridiculous. So, wait, wait. So get sucked out. Let's describe this so they. They have a pull start on the fetus mower, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, the, th- this evil doctor's just like, all right, here we go. Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> Let's do this. I got my tray of rusty knives and chainsaws <laughs> and blow torches right here. Yeah, his fucking uh, tray looks like the the selection in the third act of a zombie flick or something. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And okay, so he he pull starts his fetus mower and. We get pounds of baby slurry, right? Just it's, they <laughs> fill up two like evergreen water tanks of baby. <laughs> it's absurd. There, there might as well be a honey dipper emptying a septic tank <laughs> with a truck there. So dumb. A- abortion is apparently a lot like Ghostbusters. That's the <laughs> visual we got here. And we get this visual, by the way, on a giant projection screen yes. that they use. To show this happening, to literally show the the uterus itself while this baby is fighting and being sucked out. It's on a giant screen, like families with picnics are sitting in a park watching the <laughs> yeah, whole no, thing in an amphitheater. John Madden circling shit. Yeah. The fetus <laughs> is swinging around the sucker like a pole dancer <laughs> doing karate. <laughs> it's like the scene from... Saving Private Ryan, the hose is like schlaft, schlaft. <laughs> now, I, okay, so look, if you put the three of us together in like a hot tub sized blender, we would not produce as much human smoothie as is produced in this abortion. No, absolutely not. This is six Jamba Juices worth of material. <laughs> also, by the way, what the fuck was the doctor wearing during this? He has like a like a hazmat suit with like a full cage and he, he steps into a mech suit with like saw blade <laughs> arms. There's so much going on. Oh, we, oh. And we have to talk about how evil the doctor is every time we see him, right? Yeah. Like the doctor, like they, they, they go out of his way for him to bite the head off of a kitten every time he's in the background. Well, and this scene <laughs> is a great example. Right before he starts the abortion, right? He like gets the hose all fixed to the baby and he looks into the camera and goes, Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> and then starts to exact suck words. this nine-year-old child <laughs> into his death humor. hose. We like to have some fun here at Planned Parenthood. <laughs> and so so he sucks off the arms and the legs and the babies. <laughs> it's only a flesh wound. It's fighting like the Black Knight. <laughs> and then finally the head gets stuck at the very end and the tip of the hose. And like literally the baby might as well, the fetus might as well turn to camera and be like, suck my fat. Dick. <laughs> Man, it's so ridiculous. He just it's like when you try to vacuum up a paper clip and it won't go. <laughs> He's just like, uh, see, this is back on the floor. All right. God just just bend down and pick it up. No, I'm using the vacuum. <laughs> I'm using the, the vacuum. It doesn't fit, man. There's a block. Ugh. But all right, so but Abby, the main character, she sees this and she has she has to run off and lock herself in the bathroom to have a cry. And I just love this moment. So the nurse, another nurse walks up and she like knocks on the door and she's like, hey, Abby, are you okay? Do you need to see a doctor? And she's like, no, they're so evil. (laughs) No, they kill babies. (laughs) What if he confuses me for a baby? Now, Now, gents, can can we talk about the most wonderful thing about this scene? Which is what's that? Which is that it never fucking happened amen brother oh i guess that is a positive yeah so yeah so here's the reality it's a lying thing yeah both planned parenthood and the state's records can confirm that this type of abortion the the ultrasound assisted abortion did not happen anywhere in the state of texas on or around the time she said (laughs) this happened right Mm. this is a verifiably false claim 
Uh, I was watching Infowars. It might have been the deep state of Texas. There's something going on. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, this is what Jade Helm was all about. That's what it is. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Now we know what the Helm was. Yeah. Jade Helm, <laughs> negative 0.75. <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so again, just to be clear, literally everyone except Abby Johnson, whose response, by the way, is nuh-uh, they faked state and in-clinic records, knows that this is complete and total bullshit. We're going to talk about why she quit later. But this is not why. Well, right. And, and, and let's be super clear about it. Ugh. In order for her story to be correct, the state record keepers in Texas <laughs> have to be in on this, right? Like the politicians in Texas have to be in the pockets of big abortion. Mm. Yeah. All like right. Really big abortion, like <laughs> enormously large, <laughs> over the top size. Yeah. <laughs> comically large abortion. All right. So now we're going to cut to eight years earlier and find out how she got in such a mess to begin with. Uh, we join her as a college junior uh, at a volunteer expo learning about Planned Parenthood. Right. And she is incredible. So this is obviously a retrofit of I used to have a brain. And before I traded up, someone at Planned Parenthood explained how important Planned Parenthood was for women's health and actually reducing abortion. Because if you actually wanted to reduce abortion, giving up birth control is an amazing way to do it. But she now has to retrofit that story, which is basically a lady at a job fair tricked me with the not, not, not kill babies riddle. <laughs> <laughs> The riddle was just like, yeah, Planned Parenthood tries to minimize abortions, just to be clear. Like, nobody's like, kill that baby, USA. <laughs> no, nobody's like, nobody who's pro-choice is like excited about the abortion thing. It's right. uh, well, it, which is like an extremely important point that they accidentally made here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the thing, right? Like they 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 show this as them tricking her into uh, working for him by saying, oh, no, we're trying to reduce it. But that's true. It, that's just a true fucking thing. It's it's verifiable, by the way, too, too. Anyway, as so much of this is. But yeah, so she volunteered. What a dupe. But she can tell something's wrong. And this is how she knows she's got a heuristic for this. She's like, but if I was so proud, why didn't I tell my mom about it? And I'm like, well, your mom's a bitch. We're going to meet her later. Yeah, your mom's. And let's point out the insidiousness of using this line because she goes, never trust a decision you don't want your mom to know about, which she might as well turn to camera and be like, right, scared teenagers who need an abortion? Huh? Your parents will be mad. Huh? Huh? But, yeah. But so much of this movie winks at the fear of children. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and also, in case anybody needed a ready example of straight privilege, that line is there as well. You know, <laughs> imagine yeah. how boring her sex life has to be if that's her hur heuristic for whether something's <laughs> moral. I don't know. My my mom was like throwing out tips like she's sounds. Like <laughs> yeah, well, no, if it was your mom, it would be different. Yeah, maybe that would actually be a good heuristic for you. You've got an oh, awesome a mom. birthday card from my mom. Lick the alphabet. Come on. <laughs> <Mom>. <laughs> It's a weird ninth person. Cyrillic alphabet. That's a cool <laughs> tip, actually. Interesting. Nobody knows. Nobody sees that coming. Good one, Mom. So now, okay, so she shows up for her first day of volunteering at Planned Parenthood. And we get to meet the heroes of the movie. People who stand outside abortion clinics screaming murderer at the women trying to get health care. Yeah, the terrorists is what we call those people. Terrorists. terrorists. Yep, that is the word. They are standing on the outside of the fence that needs to be there for the protection of the women they're terrorizing. Right. Like, yep. Think about how many times we stand inside the fence with the camera and look out at the Christians and how much more fucked up this movie is if they put the camera on the outside of the fence and realize that these women are in a small little prison. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like they did that. I feel like they 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 filmed some shots like that. And they're like, oh, we are very obviously evil when you look at it from that direction. D guys, quick. Let's not let's just show the inside and how safe they are from us right <laughs> <laughs> so they know how to cut stuff that's weird it'll come up later <laughs> that it seems like they don't know how to cut stuff but yeah yeah okay but those are the good guys and now it's time to meet the boss cruella devage oh my this the attempt to make this woman a villain in the movie is the hardest stretch 
I have ever seen. And I regularly Google contortionist porn. They're just like <laughs> everything Whoa. about this woman. She's like dialing a phone evil. She's like K I L L. That's my cell phone. If you need me. <laughs> There's contortionist porn? <laughs> yeah, Can no, we go back to on. that? You're learning all she sorts is, of things here. She wow. is goddamn comically evil game, at all moments. Right? Okay. So, but yeah, so she meets her. We learn that Saturday is abortion day, right? They only do abortions on Saturday, and the protesters know it. That's why there's so many of them. <laughs> Including uh Evil Guy Fieri. Yes. Pro-life Guy Fieri yes. is one of the protesters. And he's such a bad heckler. I laughed for a while at this, too. <laughs> Not just because literally Guy Fieri pulled me out of the movie, but because he was so stumbly at his heckles. It was the best. <laughs> I, I bet you luck to kill. Don't say babies. Duh. Babies. Uh, start over. Uh. Go pull back out and pull back in. I, have a <laughs> I got line. a good one now. Wait, oh, I don't. I don't. Pull back out and wait until I give you the, the go ahead with my hand, and then in. I'll have one. <laughs> don't try and read off your hand on camera, man. Everyone can see. It's, it's sweaty. I sweat through it. <laughs> Flavor Town, dead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. And by the way, just one more time, just so everybody you know has it at the top of their mind throughout how evil this movie is. Abby's new job is to go out to people's cars and talk with the clients. So the only thing they hear isn't you're a murderer, you're a murderer when they get to the clinic. Those are the bad guys. Those are in the, the bad movie. guys in the reminder. movie. The good guys are the terrorists on the other Screaming side of the at them. fence. Yeah. And oh, by the way. OK, so here's here's Cruella's first act of evil, right? She's like, I want those protesters arrested and sprayed with water hoses. Damn it. Yeah. And they, she's like, we have to call the cops. And they feed this so stilted technical line to one of the nurses. The nurse just like turns to camera and goes, but evil boss, they are not <laughs> technically breaking the law for they are an exact amount of feet away from our health care facility. And she's like, curse them and their totally legal activities. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, as if technically legal and moral were interchangeable terms. <laughs> but I did enjoy the introduction of the turn on the sprinkler technique. <laughs> that was great. That oh, was that's great. pretty excellent. Like, I wanted the sprinklers to be like riot hoses at this point. I was like, <laughs> oh, we're going to do this. Yes. But even just the sprinklers when they do turn them yeah. on was, was pretty satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. They turn on the sprinklers to run off the protesters. Hooray for them. All right, so she does her first day at, as a, as an escort, and then she's on her way uh, home, and this is where she meets the good abortion protester of the North. Yes, the American Coalition for Life, or as they're called in this movie so you don't Google them, the Coalition for Life. <laughs> <laughs> so, a uh, little background on the American Coalition for Life, just so you know who the good guys in this movie are. They won created wanted posters that listed the names and addresses of abortion providers, offering a $5,000 reward to anyone who could stop them and then put them physically all over the place as well as on the internet. A bounty is what you're describing? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, good then, guys good guys put a bounty on doctors. Cool. cool. Then two, they published another list of abortion providers, judges, and pro-choice advocates on their website, which they called their Nuremberg Files and crossed what? out... The names of people who had been killed or injured by anti-choice advocates. Yeah. Yeah. Check. Check. Yep. What the fuck? As a result, they lost a lawsuit to Planned Parenthood where they had to pay 107 million of their tax free dollars. That's the good guys in this movie. Just keep that in mind as you watch. These are the heroes of this yeah, movie. But the key here, though, is that good abortion protester lady agrees with Abby that bad abortion protesters are bad. She's like, no, no, I'm from the Coalition of Life. We will copy your license plate and then use it to send vengeful postcards to your home. That's three on Eli's list. Another thing that they did. <laughs> uh, but we won't be dressed as the Grim Reaper outside of the th of the clinic. That's mean. That would be rude. We, we're the good guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. But now, OK, because this story has the pacing of an excuse that's being constructed on the fly by a drunken idiot, we now have to flashback within the flashback. <laughs> 
To, William Barr pacing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I set you guys up earlier for a William Barr joke when I said something about being technically legal and 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 moral as interchangeable, and nobody took it, so we just moved on. That's okay. Damn it. Um. All right. But yeah. But the back flashback. In my voice. Flashes. William Barr. <laughs> William Barr. <laughs> yeah, well, let's Morgan flash back to the joke. That in there. We're going to flash back to that fucking joke because we're going to be like this goddamn movie. This movie goes... I guess you could say it was like William Barr, right? <laughs> right? Morgan? Right, Morgan? <laughs> Put that in. All right. Anyway, so we get the nested flashback to Abby's first abortion. All right. So she got pregnant when she was in college by an older guy who just wanted her for her fertile vagina. Classic. And she should have known at the moment he showed up wearing a matching shorts and tucked in button down plaid jumpsuit. That was weird. Interesting call. It's a weird choice. Interesting call. Hey, what do we put the bad older boyfriend in? Romper. Okay. Uh, too quick. <laughs> too quick. We are going with romper, but just know that I'm upset. Here's the romper I want to use. You have it right there. Ah, okay. You took off the clothes you're wearing and you had the romper on underneath. <laughs> you're naked and we're in a Wendy's. <laughs> if you're going to be naked. All right. So, but yeah, and here's a terrible fucking argument that they present. She says, to get my first abortion, I had to get my first credit card. And I'm like, yeah, there you go. Not having children will put you into debt. Why don't you hang <laughs> some more of your credibility on that argument? Let me tell you what's the most affordable thing. Giving birth to a child. <laughs> that credit card could be 90,000% interest and still be a good financial <laughs> oh, move. Yeah. Yeah, from purely financial terms. But yeah, so she tells the story of her abortion. And I love the ending. They, they, they have her in the recovery room being miserable about her abortion or whatever. And she has this line that is basically, this is such a slight paraphrase. I aborted my fetus and all I got were these lousy crackers. Yes. And again, this is her trying to <laughs> twist the fact that abortion is such a safe clean and quick medical procedure that you sit in the hallway for a second afterwards. You sort of shake off the woozies. They give you some crackers and you can go home. It's a goddamn miracle. Past generations will look up at this at the peak of our scientific abilities. And she's like, they didn't even have any milk with the crackers. <laughs> fucking original flavor Cheez-Its. They couldn't get like one of the other ones with like, if they had, like, baguettes and camembert, they'd be cool with this whole process? Like, it's obvious we need to become abortion caterers. That's right. We're opening an abortion clinic. We don't know how to do abortions, but we will cook you up nice afterwards. We don't know how to do that either, but yeah. Oh, also, by the way, in the middle of this flashback, the good-for-nothing Lothario boyfriend that they just set up also married her. Yep. Right? Yeah. Um, so we, we get their mayor, their wedding. Dad is not very happy. And then her husband cheated on her on Valentine's Day. Oh, what a dick. yeah. He also made sandwiches for Valentine's Day, which uh, was described as something negative. And I was confused by that. Like, who wouldn't <laughs> want sandwiches? on? But then he cheated. So, okay. yeah, no, I am Great not Valentine's confused Day, yeah. by how you got confused by that. <laughs> you guys don't like sand who doesn't like sandwiches? Doesn't matter what okay. day of the year it is. Get sandwiches are like one of the best foods. What? That's crazy. Heath is Mark, everybody. We we've been waiting to tell you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> this is his chance to finally get back and happy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so she divorces him, but damn it if afterwards she didn't find out she was pregnant again. Yep. So, but now it's time for us to suffer through her painful chemical abortion with her. And we basically watch what I can only assume is what it looks like when Eli takes a shit. Okay. To be fair, I yeah, am suing this movie for stealing that footage. I sent that <laughs> to my doctor as cool. a medical procedure. Are you also suing the Alien franchise for <laughs> looking like when you shit? Yeah. We should point out this sequence could not be more exaggerated. Again, if it wasn't meant to scare children out of taking care of themselves medically, this is hilarious. She's bleeding and vomiting like an exorcism. She <laughs> shits out chunks of, you know, nine-year-old baby at one point and has to 
toss them in the toilet, it gets clogged, and they come back together <laughs> like the Terminator in T2. They form, and they, they try to stab her with their fetus sharp hands. <laughs> it's, it's, it's It's nuts. Like... Dude, she's bleeding with like a blast radius the size of the entire bathroom. Just like like a scene from Dexter. It was crazy. Do you ever like let the, a the f- balloon go? It's like that, but with blood. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. She's well, she's Nuts. the balloon. The blood's just propelling her along. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. The, yeah, the fetus might as well pop out and have dying words. It, it's it's <laughs> absurd. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. It's it. Like literally, she's got just dead baby chunks falling on the floor. She starts slipping on them. I'm not <laughs> exaggerating. That's what happens in the film. So yeah. And then she tells us it's twelve hours of agony all together. So yes, we watch Eli take a shit. <laughs> exactly. And then she calls Planned Parenthood, and they're like, "Yeah, sometimes you shit dead baby chunks all over your floor. What the fuck do you want us to do about it?" What can I say? Four out of ten times, you turn into a slot machine of agony and blood. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and this is this is the uh, evil Cruella direct director lady on the phone, right? <laughs> oh, at this is point, it? I, th- I think so. Or whoever they're trying to characterize as evil at at the the Planned Parenthood clinic. Everyone on there the is evil, yeah. right? Everybody's supposed to be evil. She's on the phone with one of those people, and the person's like, "Uh, yeah, I'm I'm sure you're having uh, a rough time with the thing over there, but I I don't have time for this." And your baby's dead, ma'am. Nailed it. High five. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in the weeds here at work. Can I call you back? <laughs> That's literally what happens. Like, I'm really busy. Yeah, I'm, I'm in I'm the. Murdered. I'm writing a tweet, and you're kind of fucking up my flow. Can I? Just... <laughs> it, it's eight o'clock on a Saturday night. You know this is when we get a pop. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. So in our abortion montage, we've seen that women regret their abortions, that they're terribly painful, terribly dangerous. I think it's time to kick it over to Carl, the pug of Pegacorn, for a brand new segment we like to call Kicking It with Carl. If you're watching a movie that's full of lies, I'm the pug of Pegacorn here to open your eyes when misogynists try to scare you. I'm the Pug of Pug of Corn here to tell you the truth. It's kicking it with Carl. Hey, everybody. It's me, Carl the Pug of Pug of Corn. My guest today is Lucinda Lusions. Lucinda, welcome to Kicking It with Carl. Thanks for having me, Carl. So tell me, Lucinda, this movie sure makes it seem like women regret their abortions. Is that true? No, Carl, it's not. According to a 2015 study, over 95% of women don't regret the decision to terminate their pregnancies. 95%? Wow. But what about, like, over time? I mean, do they end up regretting it later? Nope. In fact, over time, women are more likely to think that abortion was the right decision for them. According to a study, all results of declining emotional intensity find steady or improving levels of self-esteem, life satisfaction, stress, social support, substance abuse, and symptoms of depression and anxiety over time post-abortion. So if someone tells me that, like, people regret abortions, I should... You tell them to shove it right up their ass, Carl. All the fucking way up their ass. Okay. But what about that scene where the abortion pill makes her super sick? Is that real? Well, Carl, it's extremely rare. The two drugs used by Planned Parenthood are mifepristone followed by misoprostol. They can cause mild nausea, abdominal pain, and headaches, but the vast majority of patients don't experience anything worse than a normal, heavy period. Okay, but what about the scary stuff that happened in the movie with the bleeding and the the eight weeks of feeling super sick? Uh, Well, according to what I could find, severe side effects like those occur in less than 1% of the patients, which makes it one of the safest common medical procedures in the universe. Hmm, but having worked at Planned Parenthood, Wouldn't Abby Johnson know how rare those side effects were? She would, but she's a lying bitch. Oh, I see. Okay, one last question, Lucinda. Mm -hmm. What do you call an alligator detective? I don't know, Carl. What? An investigator. Oh, Carl. (laughs) It's kicking it with Carl. Thank you, Carl. Okay. So now Abby heads back for more clinic work. All right. So and and her job is 
I guess, go into job expos now and suckering in more naive, innocent Christians to assist in their fetal genocide. Right. <laughs> By wearing their pink cowgirl mascot uniform that they have, that they go to job fairs with. I thought that was a weird choice. Very strange. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yep. We also get some shots of her arguing with her family about working for Planned Parenthood. Oh, my. And this is yep. where they try their viability straw man. The Del this Vecchio like, argument. Yeah. All right. I have a stopwatch. I'm going to get you pregnant. You tell me when it's a baby <laughs> with a soul loved by Jesus. Man. I just came on you. <laughs> it's now. It's now. It's when I came on you. Yeah. <laughs> and we literally get the line. Well, how is eight weeks different than 24 weeks? And how she's like, are those two um, numbers different, Heath? 12. <laughs> I don't get the question. 12. No, it's not 12. It's you did 16. The, the, it's 16. 16. You got it wrong. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a number is the difference. Right. But, but her mom is classy. Mom also hates the abortions, uh, but she's classy enough to take her into the kitchen to call her a baby murderer. <laughs> Just, just like just passive aggressively clank plates at her because she <laughs> thinks she's participating in a baby holocaust. Just like, oh, okay, you look like you're done with that pie if you're going to kill over 60 million children a year. <laughs> <laughs> honey, honey, I need help in the kitchen while you uh, don't kill dead babies. That'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. This my fa possibly my favorite line in the movie. I need you to listen to me and not say anything. And I just said the Christianity story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's also, again, we have one of the many great, why would you put this in your movie things? Because Abby turns to her and she goes, hey, you know, we found a woman's uterine cancer today. And she's like, I, I know that's the majority of the care that they do at Planned Parenthood, but we're not acknowledging that in the movie. So I <laughs> um, shush. Fuck that lady. Don't get cancer. <laughs> God clearly hates bootstrap. that lady. And that was supposed to happen. <laughs> and you interfered with the uh, righteous uterine cancer. You're an <laughs> asshole. Um, but this is also where we meet her new fiance in the flashback who also doesn't approve of abortion. Mm. Right. So she, now yeah. she, she has a, a second wedding wearing white. Two abortions and one ex-husband and tacky. Yeah. yeah. And we get the new husband for a second talking to her dad mm -hmm. and the dad's all excited. He's like, oh, you're like a Christian. You're like pro-life. Cool. Uh, you do know that my daughter is a baby killer. Are you sure you love her? <laughs> you're going to do this marriage? And he's like, oh, what are you going to do? Love is love. And try <laughs> talk her out of it. And then they get married. Yeah. Yeah. And this time, but this time dad's really happy through the wedding. <laughs> All right, so after the wedding, she heads back to work at Planned Parenthood where she exchanges pleasantries with good protester lady. <laughs> oh, my gosh, how so are you harassing rape victims mostly? Oh, my God, that's amazing, huh. girl. You look great. You Thank look you. great. Thank you. Do you want to buy some Thrive? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, stop murdering babies. Bye. Yeah. Well, no, but before they, before they uh, shuffle off, we have to meet her fiance, a good abortion protester whose name is like Mary Lisa or some redneck nonsense, the good abortion <laughs> protester lady. She also has a new fiance. They met at the clinic. They were both praying for the aborted fetuses. That's sad and horrible. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but do you come here often? Oh yeah. All the time. It's, it's about intimidating women. You do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Where did the smoke come from? We're not, we're outdoors, <laughs> whatever. Lock eyes. Okay, so then we see Abby counseling women, like lubing them up for the big abortion. Oh my God. The first woman is so, she's like, so it cannot feel pain or curse my name and seek revenge from Baba Yaga. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, <laughs> no, ma'am. Oh my God. So she says this part of her thing here. She turns to the girl who's thinking about an abortion. She says, it's really like a polyp at this point. And the couple behind me was goddamn scandalized. <laughs> they were ready. If they didn't know she got what was coming to her, they would have walked out right then and there. <laughs> yeah. And she explains it at one point. She's like, okay, I know this is confusing. Abortion, it's actually not like a car or an ice cream cone. <laughs> it is. And a the patient is like, oh, okay. right. Okay. Right. Got it. What? <laughs> I asked you if it feels anything. And she's like, 
I don't know. Ask it. Hey, fetus, nothing? That's what I thought. Boom, we're doing the abortion. It's so <laughs> ridiculous. Hey, fetus, if you feel anything, fight as hard as you can against the suction hose in a couple of years. Sorry, we like to kid around okay. here. We like to have fun. <laughs> yeah, so she talked people into murdering their babies for a living, and it was right about then that her and her husband became super Christian. Oh. I wonder what will happen. Okay. So then we cut to the, this is great. The abortion nurses all making fun of the Christian protesters like they do. Basically, oh. we cut in on the fucking shit going, okay, so I masturbating with a crucifix to a snuff film the other night, and who should knock on my door? <laughs> it was called Unplanned. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's pretty sweet <laughs> Fuck. And uh, this is where Boss Lady walks in, and she's like, I like your shoes. And Boss Lady's just like, yes. You do. I'm evil. <laughs> yes. Just crushing bones underneath her feet. She walks in there and she goes, Abby, I think you're ready to level up. <laughs> Meet me in the POC room. Uh, and what does POC stand for? I, I honestly figured it was where they kept the one black lady in this film. <laughs> they have a separate entrance. <laughs> what are you no, guys doing? It uh, it stands for pieces of children. Well, it stands for products of conception. Uh, but yes, yeah, they throw that little joke in there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so if we haven't earned our R rating yet, we're about to. You oh, see. Yeah. When you do an abortion, I don't know if this is true at all. And I, given the source, I mean, <laughs> sorry, it's not. But it kind of makes sense intuitively. When they do an abortion, they have to reassemble each baby. You have to start with the edge pieces. You have to have the box top. <laughs> you have to reassemble each baby so that you can tell that no parts were left behind in the uterus. That's the, And that's what they do in the POC room. Somebody's job... <laughs> Is to assemble the baby. Oh, because do you think there's a bitchiness that goes on at clinics? Like someone sees the doctor cutting it into too many pieces and they're like, come on, man. My whole <laughs> fucking afternoon. I had just concert two. tickets. Ah, oh, it's going to take forever. This well, is the new official puzzle in a thunderstorm, by the way. <laughs> jigsaw puzzle of fetus that apparently they do <gasps> in the POC room. Oh, uh, by the way, I cannot find any reputable sources. The only people repeating this claim are anti-choice websites, and most of them are citing Abby Johnson. Well, right. And, and, but, okay, so here's the thing, though. Even if it were true, the argument from that's gross is not a good argument, right? Like the fucking the anti-meat people do this all this fucking time. They show you the letters. Look, if, if being gross meant it was immoral, we'd have to ban autopsies and murder investigations and open heart surgery and menstruation. That is not a good argument. You're just yes, being we an should asshole. Ban all of those things. What? Sorry, what you said, <laughs> what you said. <laughs> but but this is where she uncovers the fetus. And this fetus is it's Heath Enright. It is a 38 year old man <laughs> just lying seven, there. It's got a little note pinned to his chest that says, please don't kill me, mommy. And when they showed it, my theater lost its goddamn, the wailing and gnashing of teeth <laughs> that took place in my movie theater when this, you know, plastic model of a Cenobite came out was, <laughs> it was intense. Wait, there's a little bit missing from the face. I need... Check back in the room like a like an amoeba. It'll be like a little piece that looks like an amoeba. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not enough eyebrow mites here. Hold on. Um, yeah, no, and I love Cruella at this point, right? So Abby comes in and she's just kind of fascinated and shit. And she goes, Wow, most people come in here and cry, but you just man, you just started doing little jack off motions with their arm buds. Way to go. Way to You're go. Here. You are the ultimate baby killer. Take this <laughs> tiny sword. <Yeah. laughs> you could be a great baby assassin one day. Now pluck no. this embryo from my hand. Now have a kung fu battle with Larry Fishburne's fetus. Go. <laughs> you are the Neo of abortions. What the fuck is happening? So, all right. So that night she's in bed with her husband and he thinks he can smell the pregnant on her. <laughs> it's... 
what a weird scene to include in the movie. Uh, hon, are you sure you're not pregnant? Why? No reason. Did not swap your birth control out for Skittles. That's what you're asking. <laughs> I don't even know Who why said Skittles? anyone brought that up. So. Crazy. So paranoid. <laughs> But yeah, so she gets a pregnancy test from the office, stealing company property, and finds out that, yes, she is, in fact, pregnant. <laughs> and and she's, she's in the bathroom at the Planned Parenthood <laughs> yeah. taking the test, and she walks out of the stall, and the boss lady, evil boss lady, sees that she just took a pregnancy test. She's holding it, and the boss lady's like... Oh, hey, you know what? That's perfect. Uh, we can kill that during lunch if you want. Like, we're all <laughs> we, set. A- we, we do we do employee discounts, actually. Um, <laughs> but that that's your break. That will count as your 30, but we'll do that right away. <laughs> it's like at the end of my Quizno shift when I was a teenager, you got to make yourself whatever sandwich you wanted. It's like that for abortions at Planned Parenthood. Right, yeah. They'll just get you one <laughs> exactly. right at the end. Except for the Black Angus. You couldn't have that one. Well, they, okay. <laughs> Jerks. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to get that out there. It's been 188 episodes, and I always thought it was weird. All right, so now this this was an amazing moment. Henry Ford me. did this, too. It's a great business model. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So, okay, we have to talk about this. This moment really freaked me out. So she calls her mom. She finds out she's pregnant. She calls her mom, and her mom's like, are you going to abort it? <laughs> that question is such a weird insight into the relationship. Like, mom th- seriously thought she was going to call her and say, hey, mom, I'm pregnant, but you still don't get to be a grandma, you bitch. <laughs> Got it. Dunked on. <laughs> <laughs> You're on speakerphone. <laughs> All right. See you at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now Abby's back her, at, at work. Her coworkers are just begging her to abort because they love abortion so much. One of them is like, here you go, abortion pill right out of my Pez dispenser, flicks it to it. There you go. <laughs> You're fine. All right. Okay. So now we have to meet, the, like, there's a dad here to force his daughter to murder her baby, right? Oh, the abortion that goes wrong. Yes, that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, we the, the daughter goes back to have her abortion. We cut from there to the daughter in the recovery room pouring blood like a fire hydrant. People oh. might as well swim through her blood <laughs> to her and be like, she seems fine. <laughs> it's nuts. It was like Kurt Schilling's bloody sock to like the, t- the 20th. It, it was insane. Like, like uh, sorry, we we tried to pull the baby out of her ankle. I don't think <laughs> the doctor is very good at his job. It's apparently not ankle. So we're, okay. we're narrowing it down. You're going to laugh, but the, we keep the juicer right next to the abortion machine, and you're never going to guess which one we accidentally put your daughter's uterus into. <laughs> oh. yeah, It is right. nutritious, though. So she's auditioning for elevator operator at the Overlook Hotel. Abby runs in, and she's like, oh, my God, abortions are so dangerous. <laughs> so dangerous and risky and painful, everyone. Yeah, and I write in my notes at this point, wow, if we made them illegal, imagine how dangerous they would be. <laughs> but she's trying to help. And of course, asshole doctor runs in, literally throws Abby out of the way. He Move. punches her across the room. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> I don't, like why Thanos. would you have that? Yeah. I wanted him to fall, like not actually help the girl. He's just beating the shit out of Abby. <laughs> I'm a bad guy. <laughs> ah, elbow drop. <laughs> He's jumping from turnstiles on top of her. <laughs> fetus jumps out, starts fighting the doctor. <laughs> yeah. oh, tags in a fetus. See? Crazy billionaire and bunny people. All right. So so he goes, I'll call, or uh, Abby yells, I'll call an ambulance. And Cruella says, I'll cut off your fucking head. If if this woman needs to die to protect the clinic, she will die. <laughs> we never call 911 here at Planned Parenthood. This is, granted, this is just a play school doctor that we have, but we're still sticking with it. We will not <laughs> yes. call ambulances. What? Well, okay, but here's the argument that they make. And again, this is their movie. She's like, we can't call an ambulance because then the protesters would see the ambulance. They'd get it on film. They'd use that to argue that abortions are unsafe and they would force us to do this procedure with sterilized coat hangers and turkey basters. So, like, even their bullshit that they make up, they're still the bad guys in. Right. The reason we don't call ambulances is 
Wait, your friends and the protagonists of this movie would use it to take away women's health care. Because of terrorism. Yep. <laughs> yes, right. We're succumbing to terrorism. Yes. Yes. Oh, and by the way, they, they, they toss this line in as almost an afterthought. Cruella turns to her and says, don't worry, we'll pump this patient up with memory erasing drugs so that no one will ever be able to corroborate this story. <laughs> We, we keep a hypnotist on staff. <laughs> Nostradamus, get in here. We got another bleeder. And then we got the flashy thing from Men in Black. Yeah, well, that too. That too, but chemically. All right, and, and of course, while this is going on, Dad's in the waiting room getting ever more nervous about his abortion daughter. So Cruella's like, Abby, go out there and lie to him. Oh, it's amazing. She's like, hey, she's fine. Totally fine. Look how wide my eyes are. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> do you have any extra daughters? Like <laughs> uh, by the way, this is when I noticed that there was a mouse in my theater. It was the only other person in the theater with me. <laughs> you oh, keep that's who ticket. bought the ticket. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, that's crazy. Okay, that makes sense. And like, I don't mean like, oh, a bunch of rows down, I saw a mouse run across the floor. I mean... In the next seat was a mouse, like, <laughs> using the recliner button and sitting back into the seat, just looking at me. It was really weird. I mean, it was a, it was a good looking mouse, though. over his dick or something. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? I, I, I mean, that would have worked. Again, it was a good looking mouse. It was an adorable, adorable mouse, but I could not concentrate for a while. <laughs> All right. We'll, I just we'll to take play with over the for this bit. Can you take over? I couldn't concentrate for the rest of the movie. Because of the, <laughs> the mouse. All right, but the point that we have to like end on after this terrible abortion that went wrong thing or what, everyone was fine. Nothing was wrong. And the only negative consequences were that dad had to wait extra long at the clinic and people had to clean up blood, right? Yeah. The real victims, the dads who have to wait a few more minutes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I don't know. How dangerous is abortion? Looks like it's time for us to kick it back over. To Carl. It's kicking it with Carl. Welcome back. Boy, Lucinda, that scene was sure scary. Abortion looks really dangerous. Actually, Carl, legal abortions performed in the developed world are among the safest procedures in medicine. In the U.S., the risk of maternal death from abortion is 0 0.7 per 100,000 procedures. And that's about 13 times safer than childbirth. I mean, childbirth, sure. But how does it compare to other medical procedures? Well, it's safer than plastic surgery, dental procedures, even running a marathon, Carl. Huh, that does seem safe. But again, wouldn't Abby Johnson know that? She would, Carl. But again, she's a malicious cancer of a human being. Oh, OK. Yeah. Now, I've got a question for you. Do you know how to light up a football stadium? Oh, how? With a soccer match. <laughs> <laughs> it's kicking it with Carl. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> and to, to, to fucking emphasize what Carl was saying. If your argument is medical procedures sometimes have complications and are therefore evil, wait until I tell you about dentistry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going to hate driving in a car. <laughs> yes. yeah. But again, it was fine. The girl was fine. It turns out the abortion doctor is also a doctor of medicine <laughs> in those places. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and then, okay, we get this long shot of the nurses having to clean up the scene of the crime, you know, scrub away the blood. Yeah, like with a giant mop on the floor, cleaning pieces off the floor. It was crazy. Like like they were breaking down a bar at the end of the night, yes, just yes. talking to each other. Like that was the mood of it. It was like, all right, I, I wiped the floor. Did you put fucking <laughs> quat sanitizer in the baby filter trap that we have also? Because we'll get fruit flies if you don't pour down the sanitizer. I just the love thing. the idea that some redneck lady is going to be wolfing down a double bacon steak burger and going, you can tell it's evil on account of how much blood and grossness there is involved. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. 
I just wanted that montage because they show the nurse trying to clean it and she can't trying to clean. I wanted her to come back and get comical. Like she's got one of those steam hoovers. <laughs> blood's just splattering everywhere. Jesus. Yeah, like try to cut their toenails in Dumb and Dumber <laughs> kind of a thing. Yeah, right, right. Oh, and then they throw Abby a surprise baby shower as soon as they get all the blood chunks cleaned up. Interesting pick for venue for a baby shower. And they're right here. Okay. I mean, there's like a TGI Fridays, like a block away. Yeah. No? All right. All right. And also, okay. So this is when the 40 day prayathon started. This is a real thing that the American Coalition for Life did. Now, just consider for a second what an asshole thing this is to do. For 40 days and nights, for 24 hours a day, they held candlelight vigils at this clinic, standing around it so there was no possibility that at any point anyone could get in or out of it without being harassed by assholes. Oh, I just want to see a montage of all those idiots burning themselves on candles 24-7 <laughs> trying to keep that going. Oh, oh. Also, they, they do have to acknowledge the violence here for a moment. They're like, Cheryl said they were violence, but that, that only happened if few times very clearly in a way that you could google during this yeah right she's like God. cruella pretends that they're evil just because they occasionally assassinate people and bomb stuff she's such a bitch and <laughs> scene yeah. what <laughs> you can't keep doing that <laughs> doodly do no stop no. trying to do doodly do you can't doodly do out of the movie <laughs> doodly do doodly do <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then, credits. Nope. Yeah, you're right. All right, and then also Abby has her baby. Yeah. And mom was really hoping she was going to quit Planned Parenthood once we saw how nice babies were when you didn't murder them. <laughs> <laughs> we also get one fun little moment here, actually. She's given birth. We're at the hospital, and the husband's like, okay, so uh, as I understand it, you're two centimeters dilated now. And she's like, fuck your centimeters. Really? <laughs> metric you fucking nerd no get the fuck out of here i actually enjoyed that part like just her yelling at him that was fun yeah but mom is worried that she's not gonna quit her baby killing job uh she's excited because she could be the head baby assassin now and then we have to get the long scene of like mom and dad worrying about her yep this is the scene where mom keeps taking away food right as dad's about to eat it oh <laughs> my theater loved this same scene. here they were, they were, they ran up to the booth. They put the guy in a headlock, made him rewind it two or three times. <laughs> oh, chuckle city. <laughs> and, and I love, okay. So like mom, what mom is basically saying is here, I sure wish women weren't so empowered these days. It was better when we had men to do the thinking for us. The literal ending <sighs> bitter line of mom in this scene is she's got aspirations. Yeah. That's the actual ending line to, of this To scene. be a baby-killing magnate? <laughs> He's going straight to the top. What? I don't understand. But yeah, mom was basically just trying to be like, well, you didn't kill your baby, so you must quit your baby-killing job now. I used similar words in those two things. <laughs> yeah, so and therefore... I'm right. They're the same. All right, so, but, okay, now she's with her husband. She's praying about her big promotion, and it's this weird bullshit thing that Christians do where they're like, well, you know, prayer doesn't matter because God can do whatever he wants. So I'm going to pray that God will do whatever he was going to do, and then that will be obviously the will of God. So I'll go along <laughs> with it. <laughs> Made no sense. Even the husband knew. He's like, that's dumb. I'm a <laughs> yeah, Christian, and I know that's dumb. The husband points it out. He's like, honey, did you just say that things will happen? And she's like, I did. I did. <laughs> now that I hear it. <laughs> Sorry. Doodly do. Doodly do. Stop it. Stop it. We're, we're both still on the bed. Doodly do. Canceled it. I did it the other way. All right. Doodly do. Did, Sorry. Which way was it? She does get the big promotion, though. So now she's in charge of the whole clinic, and she's going to run a kinder, gentler abortion mill. Yeah, no more being mean to the protesters, which I think when we think about abortion clinics and protesters, we think about how badly the clinic treats the protesters. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that's step one on our list of one steps. Yeah, from now on, we're being super nice to the protesters. And one of the other workers there is like, 
Oh, you mean like the one who's literally filming a patient right now as she gets out of her car? Oh, my fucking like, oh, God. Fuck, didn't we write this movie? You keep making me sound crazy. I don't understand what to do. Yeah. yeah. So she has to go outside and deal with that. It's gross. So so here's, in, in case you're just, just learning how evil these fuckers really are, one of their favorite tactics is to go outside these clinics and film women going in and out of them so they can put that footage online and hopefully shame those women and occasionally get them beaten or killed by their lovers, husbands, rapists, fathers, whatever. All right. Ugh. And the excuse is that, is that illegal? Please tell me it's illegal. No, to do that. it's is not it, illegal it's, to it, film God someone in public. So no, they're in they're in the property of uh, of a medical provider. How is that not in the parking lot? They're not. Yeah, right. The Christians aren't. Um, and that's the thing. OK, and they're excused for it, though. They, they say, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. What we're doing is we're filming the protest to make sure that if you accuse us later of doing anything illegal, we'll have video evidence that we didn't, which is nonsense because they just turned the camera a different way when they were doing illegal shit. Right. So it, it couldn't even be the thing they're saying it is. But that's their bullshit excuse. And that's how they present it in the movie. And she even says in the fucking thing, she's like, OK, well, if you're doing that, can you just film the protesters instead of the door to the clinic? <laughs> The tripod doesn't rotate. It's no. fixed. Yeah. But now, guys, let's be fair, because this videotaping outside of abortion clinics, yes, it does have its downside. But on the upside, you do get to see videos on YouTube of people throwing full size slushies at abortion protesters. And that, oh, that's worth it. Yeah. There's a compilation online. Yeah. From first person perspective. It's nice. Yeah. It's oh. pretty phenomenal. Is that legal? That should uh, in turn be legal if the filming thing is legal. That <laughs> should just be like a, a law that goes together. Yeah, it's it not should legal. Be. It should be. And yeah. you absolutely should not do it. And I realize it. don't do <laughs> We I realize will not technically retweet don't that. do that, but <laughs> mm, mwah, I want to watch that now. We will not share that and give you free tickets to live shows. I'll we tell you that not. right now. We will no, not. We're very we will, serious are, about We won't. We will not. not allowed like, to there's do no that. winking. Or urine, so, if you have a big thing in urine. No, 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 moving on. Don't do that either. Um, and so there's all kinds of things we get. Here's a list of things not to throw at abortion protesters. No. Oh, and then we get the scene where the abortion protester, she comes out to complain that they are filming and the abortion protester totally nails her in the argument because he wrote both sides of it. But it's, he doesn't even. No, no, <laughs> he no, doesn't this is even. the best they could do when they write the other side. Yes. Uh huh. They lost to themselves in an argument that they wrote both sides of in a script that actually happened. They're trying to do the argument that like, uh, you know, slavery and the Holocaust were terrible things where, you know, a group of people were marginalized and, you know, the unborn, it's the same. Like, that's where they end, though. That's the argument is like abortion is the same as slavery and the Holocaust. What? Yeah, oh. I thought I'm the good guy in this movie. You Didn't you write this for me? I wanted so badly for Abby to be like, hey, real quick, that uh, that Holocaust civil rights thing and slavery, which side were you guys on? In yeah, that? The Right. Well, OK, but wow. here's the thing. Though. Here's the thing that just really betrays what this movie is for. This movie is not to reach out to anybody or convince anybody. This is just like it's assumed that you agree that abortion is like the Holocaust when you walk into this movie. Mm -hmm. It's to scare children. Yep. And to reaffirm the thinking. Yeah. And to get those people children. out to vote and, and to vote for more, uh, you know, politicians that will chip away at, at abortion rights. Exactly. Wow. I'm I, honestly though I'm actually impressed. They made it almost an hour before going full Godwin. That's like, true. That's yeah. Way that's better than I thought they would do. No, no. If we'd had a betting pool, we would all lost. We would all uh, <laughs> uh, underbid. They lied at second zero, but they didn't do the, the Hitler thing until about an hour in. That's exactly. I guess yeah. a win. Yeah. So okay. So then the the narration starts telling us that part of her job was selling abortions and we get my best worst. I wanted a montage, right? Of her just slipping <laughs> roofies into random <laughs> drinks at the bar. You know, she's going door to door with her baby vac or something, but no, it's just her sitting in a room going, well, if you think about it, it's a very sensible thing to do. If you, yep. uh, if you think about it, you can't afford not to buy this baby. <laughs> <murder>. <laughs> You bundle and get a three pack. It's actually a better deal. I don't want to tell you how to spend your money. I'm just saying. There you go. She's doing the whole like over the top salesman yeah, thing. Yeah, let me you go know, talk again. to my boss and see if we can get that coating yeah. taken off for you. <laughs> All right. She walks back out. Here, hold this dead fetus. Just get a feel for it. It's in your hand. <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. Yeah, but the, the key here, though, is that those nonprofits sure are about the bottom line. And then we have to meet evil abortion getter, and we can tell that she's bad because she's black. Yep. The only person in this movie who doesn't regret her abortion just happens to be a woman of color. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. It's funny. There was a dog in my theater at this point just started going crazy. Something hurt its ears. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so her, Rhonda, the, the African-American woman that's here for her 23rd abortion, they got a picture. She's got a picture on the wall, like, you know, the person who finished the Grande Burger and her <laughs> mom. <laughs> yeah, her mom is outside the gate screaming Rhonda as though she thought the Academy was going to hear her. Yeah, maybe don't invite mom every time to these yeah. things. <laughs> She's like, don't mind my mom. She screams like that every time I get an abortion. Oh, I want her to do it at all medical procedures. She gets like she's at her dental cleaning. Rhonda! <laughs> Rhonda! <laughs> Sorry, my mom just hates God, healthcare. God, that plaque there. That plaque is a living thing. It's a living <laughs> bacteria. Was that Rhonda's mom in the Mystic River clip? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that is her daughter in there. <laughs> it is. Her granddaughter. <laughs> All right, but yes, but okay, but that night, because I guess the Rhonda thing really got to her. So that night, she looks up her own abortion records, technically, is what she says happened. Yeah, and yeah. here's what actually, so this is her cover story. We're going to get to why she actually got fired later in the movie. But her cover story is that she went to her own patient records to, like, gently run her thumb along her ultrasound. What she actually did is stole doctor and patient information so she could feed them to Christians who could then blackmail people into not getting abortions or working with abortion clinics anymore. Allegedly. But this is her movie, so allegedly. allegedly. So this is her story. Yeah. yeah. And it's supposed to be her, like, big, you know, turning point or the beginning of her turning point. She's like, oh, man, she looks at the ultrasound and she's sad and she's kind of changing her mind about things. But it's so like she might as well watch her like that sucking out video with like the IMAX theater inside this plan <laughs> that they have. Well, 3D. I wanted to see like the abortion baby baby box, right? Like she pulls out like one of those little <laughs> plaster handprint things, but there's no imprint on it, you know, just blank forms and shit. Jug full of red liquid. <laughs> it's just a puzzle piece. What's this? That's weird. All right. Well, I guess this is as close to dramatic turn as this movie's ever going to fucking get. So we're going to pause here. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Abby see the error of her ways? Will she be visited by the ghosts of abortion past, present, and future? How much better a movie would that have been? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the citation needed conclusion of Unplanned. Hi, can I talk to you for a second? Sure. I, I used to work here and I need to tell you something about what I've been through. You see, cool. cool. I, yeah, no, just me first, though. Uh, I'm a 14 year old who was raped by her dad. I faked two sleepovers and traveled four hours across the state to have this medical procedure done but i gotta get in the building really quick because your friends are filming me right now right there and if that video gets back to my dad he might literally kill me so that's my thing oh um wow yeah yeah sorry but what was your thing you said you had something oh okay well my, my... Uh, is it that you're a fat liar who realized she could trade up i mean yeah, you're a fat liar who realized she could trade up. And we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin Abby four years after the last time we saw her, inching ever closer to that fatal day from scene one. And this is the story of how efficiently they killed babies in the lead up to Hurricane Ike. What is um, this section of the movie? <laughs> I, don't know. I, uh, think, I think they're saying that God attacked the southern United <laughs> States with a hurricane. <laughs> Because of abortion. I think that's what they're saying. I think it's might that, be. Or they were in the writer's meeting with this movie and Abby Johnson had just finished off the box of munchkins she brought for herself. And she was like, oh, and also you have to include that time that I totally nailed it on my abortion thon. And they were like, mm. that kind of <laughs> goes against the message of our movie. And he's like, no, I, I nailed it. I got like mm. 84 done in a single day. 
I, just, I still have a box of full size donuts. Just come back to me. <laughs> Started with the munchkins, though. Yeah, no, but that's the. I guess if anything, we're supposed to be showing here that she was really good at killing babies because the hurricane was going to come in on Saturday, which meant that they were going to have to kill double the babies on Friday. <laughs> yep. She was like, all right, well, you know, I guess we got to cancel them all. Hold on. What if I do a literal killing marathon tomorrow? And the director of Planned Parenthood, her, her boss at this point is like, do it. That's fucking great. Perfect. I wanted so badly for them to cut to a Lucy and Ethel conveyor belt of abortion. <laughs> stuffing <laughs> fetuses down their dresses and eating them. It's ridiculous. Yeah, she's like, all right, well, I'm going to bring in a bunch of extra doctors and... Uh, Pink Floyd money starts playing. Yes. And <laughs> dun, 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 we got time the for doctor montage. doing one on the right hand, one with the left. Yeah. yeah. Um, He's killing 10 babies at once, blindfolded like Bobby <laughs> Fisher. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Like Legolas and Gimli, the two doctors are arguing over who got how many. Yeah. All right. But then, yeah, we get a rescheduling abortions montage. Gotta admit. If I did have a list of shit I never expected to see in my life, that would have been in the top 10. <laughs> yeah. Push it to the limit. Yep. I <laughs> and the tiger starts playing. And then <laughs> cut over to Rocky in the freezer in the back, punching little fetuses on meat hooks. <laughs> little speed bag. Yeah, Jesus but I want to point out the hurricane, the front end of the hurricane starts hitting at this point. So the guy in the POC room was doing a puzzle in a thunderstorm at this yeah, point. See, there we go. <laughs> Prophetic. All right. So Abby gets home from the big day of uh, baby killing. Her daughter runs up to him. And is like, Mom, your shoes are covered in blood. <laughs> Spattered in the blood of the innocent. You OK? <laughs> Also, uh, looks like a fetus stuck to the toilet paper on your shoe. Is that, is that what that is? Is that a fetus? No. Is that a little no. help note in its hand? Ah, no, it's it's crumble it up, throws it, eats it. The tooth fairy, honey. Well, yeah, so she lies to the daughter. And then the husband comes up and says, see, you have to lie to your daughter on account of how evil you are. And I'm like, but. But EMTs and cops also have to lie when the when their kids notice the blood on their uniforms from time to time, right? Like, that again, not a good argument. Flash cut over to an EMT, so he gets this light bulb stuck up his ass. 911 <laughs> tells him, sir, do not try to remove that. But, of course, he has to sit down and wait for me. I'm pulling shards out. He's hemorrhaging. The two guys in gift masks, they're starting to choke on their own cum. Honey, sit down. Daddy's trying to get you ready for second grade. <laughs> I'm a bug of bigger <laughs> Clearly. There's an asshole stuck to the toilet paper on your shit. <laughs> All right. So now we come to the big day when she... They made a movie about her life, y'all, and they included this. We cut to the big day when she got her Employee of the Month award from Planned Parenthood. <laughs> the award. She's the only clinic that's hitting its... Death quota. It's hitting Fetus their quota. abortion target that they have <laughs> at Planned Parenthood. They have quotas. They don't She's imply it. They say it. Yeah. They just yeah. say it. And then and then they unveil the giant abortion plex they want to build. With this new abortion factory, we will be able to perform abortions <laughs> on babies. That are five years old. Up to a 106 week abortion. Pulls off a blanket. There's a model. This is going to be a 78,000 square foot fetus killing Thunderdome facility. <laughs> what Everybody is this? get excited. What is this? An abortion center for ants? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then she's like, well, to make this possible, though. We will need you all, except for Abby, who's doing amazing. The rest of you will need to literally double your murdering. That needs to happen. <laughs> You'll have to kill twice as many babies to make the abortion plex possible. Oh. Oh. We are slashing prices. We've gone crazy. <laughs> what? Oh, God. Coffee I just want to be a f is for womb closers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to be a fly on the wall in that brainstorming session. Okay, guys, we've been we've been doing this all night. 
Uh, corporate wants double the abortions, and they need ideas. We got to have something good by tomorrow's meeting. Let's do this. I, yeah, I, I still think we're skipping over Talia's idea of soaking random tampons and sperm real quickly. We didn't really yeah. even give. Uh, uh huh. Uh -huh. But again, anything that might lead to you know an immaculate conception story. That's more trouble than it's worth. Right. Oh. Again, I like where your yeah. head's at, but that's not going to fly. Oh, uh, what about uh, a punch card? You get five abortions um, and then the sixth one is free. Yeah, you don't have that's great. We already have those. Yeah. Loyalty oh. program. Okay. Oh, if we tell women they're having twins, we could charge double. Oh, hmm. Okay. Let's put that on the maybe list. Oh, that's not bad. I got one. Okay. Hear me out. Okay, it always scares me when you start with hear me out. Are you going to do word. something crazy? One okay. word. Gamification. What? what? We flip the patient over. We set up one of those claw machines like at the arcade. And then we charge kids to perform the abortions. We double dip and mm. we don't have to pay doctors that's that a, way. That's a terrible idea. Huh. You're a terrible idea. I should have been aborted. He has to put a dollar in the jar. Okay, that's that's fair. Dollar in the jar. But yeah. look, uh, I'm tired. I say we go with the uh, the twin ploy and John's idea about bundling an artificial insemination slash abortion combo pack. Are we all agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Fine. Okay. Now, go out there and poke holes in condoms, people. Okay, all right. So at this point, though, Abby's heard enough. She's like, double our abortions. I'll be damned. Our thought, I thought our mission was to prevent abortion. And everybody snickers at her naivety, you know. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the real story behind this, because we are getting to her quitting and seeing a baby. The real story behind this, which we posted in the link in the show notes, they wanted to start giving out the medically induced abortion, the pills, um, as opposed to the surgical procedure. Like, every weekend and according to a bunch of her co-workers she was like i don't want to work every weekend so this is what this battle has turned into in abby johnson's mind we need to triple our abortions is different than we can now help people more than one day a month yes right <laughs> right yeah i don't want to do a swing shift on the you told me I'm <laughs> exactly i don't want to do a swing shift is the real abby johnson story you allegedly. guys have to do my side work if we do this <laughs> Just cutting fetus lemons. <laughs> <laughs> Those can be used as birth control. <laughs> the lemon rind. I heard somebody did that. Roll up. Casanova did that. All right. So, but after the meeting, Cruella reads her the riot act. This is where she literally says that abortions are the quote, fries and soda of planned parenthood. It's. Yep. This movie argues with itself so badly here. She's like, we are in the business of abortions. And again, I don't know why they even bothered to put this in the movie. Abby's like, we're a nonprofit. We're by definition not in the business of anything. <laughs> nonprofit schmon profit. Yeah, she we're in says, the business of abortions. Yeah, she says nonprofit is just a stat, uh, tax status. I'm like, no, no, no. When you're a non religious group, there's all kind of shit. You got to disclose expenditures. <laughs> and I yeah. see why you would think that that's just a tax status. Yeah, exact words. Nonprofit is a tax status, not a business model. Um, nope, it's actually both. It's <laughs> it, both is, it is. It is. Actually, those are not mutually exclusive. But here's the, the argument is so fucking stupid to begin with, right? Again, even if you accept the nonsensical premise that Planned Parenthood is out there to sling as many abortions as poss possible because they make more profit off that. <laughs> the procedure that forces you to have armed security, increases your insurance rates, leaves you constantly updating or spending to be in compliance with the latest bullshit law from the Texas state legislature, makes you a non-viable recipient for a huge swath of philanthropic contributions and leaves you a constant risk of losing all of your federal funding, oh yeah, and your life. That's the profitable one. Yeah. So you gotta upsell those toppings, lady. Let's do this. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? And Cruella even says at this point, she's like, look, I didn't say anything when you got pregnant and decided not to kill your baby. As though Planned Parenthood is seeking the eradication of the human race. Look, we work here at Burger King and you come in with McDonald's for lunch every single day. Yes. That's what it's like when you have a baby here at Planned Parenthood. <laughs> she 
Jesus fucking Christ. All right. So then we cut to Abby complaining to her husband about that last scene. Uh, about no. third trimester abortion specifically. That she's doing in Texas. No, you're not. <laughs> no, yeah. Scott, fuck you. Also, the description of, the, like, everything about this is wrong and insane. Like, a casual Google about what third trimester abortions are and how often they're performed and the reasons they're performed show you how monstrous this scene is. But she's like, so first we read it, good night, moon. We snap its neck <laughs> from behind like Steven Seagal. You remember Under Siege? That's it. Then we cut off its leg and just toss it around the room for a little while. Yeah. I don't know why. It's it's basically a 35-year-old person at that point. Yeah. And yeah, so it takes a while. We murder it on day one, um, and then we murder it again to be <laughs> thorough on day two and three. We also uh, we have a tiny little guillotine on day three if we need it. <laughs> we let we it burst its head it. out, then we, yeah. we chop it each yeah. time. It's like a Julianne, the, actually, because we have a jigsaw grid. puzzle is kind of boring and easy at that point, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that episode of Lie to Me where the serial killer keeps waterboarding them and then bringing them back to life and waterboarding? That's a third trimester abortion, just in case you yeah, were wondering. It's kind of like that. Tim Roth. All right. So the, <laughs> the next day or something, uh, Hubby shows up at the clinic to take her on a date and they go for Mexican food like he's trying to fuck Heath. <laughs> well, it worked. Yes. <laughs> We're well, real good. My notes are right. a beautiful man. Oh, good. I was hoping we'd get to see them eat. Yeah. At this point, this movie was so insane. I was like, they're going to find fetus in their Mexican food, <laughs> right? Like, it's going <laughs> to. One second. I aborted this baby this morning. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And oh, okay. So we cut to them at the Mexican restaurant, deciding what they're going to eat. And for. Phase two of his big date night plan, he thought maybe they would go home and watch DVDs that they own. Yeah, uh, like the Goonies. Yeah, it's a good choice. But, I mean, you know. But she didn't like the Goonies. And I was like, fuck you. I right? was furious at this point, almost as mad as I was <laughs> the rest of the movie. Like, weirdly angry about that part. Goonies is delightful. Things he doesn't like about Abby Johnson in order. She doesn't like the Goonies. And she's a big liar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but so, but just then on the TV, they hear about Dr. Tiller getting killed. And for those of you who might not recall, he was one of the few doctors in this country that was brave enough to perform those really controversial third trimester abortions that really freak out the anti abortion protesters. One of the few people in the country willing to do that. He was demonized by groups like the American Coalition for Life and Bill O'Reilly and they called him Tiller, yeah. Tiller, baby killer and shit until eventually a mentally unstable Christian shot him in the back of the fucking head. A Christian shot. You're being redundant. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. A Christian shot him in the back of the fucking head. And the movie felt the need to say we disagree tactically with that person that should be a red flag for you and we're like you we, we're gonna need to spend a few minutes making it clear to everyone that we don't endorse endorse this assassination you're involved in a bad thing yeah or maybe just don't include a uh, moment in your propaganda film at all <laughs> so weird it's like like the movie was like trying to like do an exercise here like to like see how good they like it's an interesting hole. You just dug yourself there, movie. What are you going to do? And they're like, oh, we guess we we got to write ourselves out of this. Nope. Doodly they just wrote them into it. Doodly they wrote, wrote themselves into doodly it. Doodly do. No doodly do. <laughs> do doodly and scene. Keep going. This is in our movie. Just yeah. sitting around the scripting room. Guys, do we have to mention how often our yep. side murders people? There yeah. is no such thing as cutting. Got it. <laughs> All right. Clearly. All right. really do. So they drive away. They're they're rushing to get their daughter just in case she's next on the anti-abortion hit list. And she, she her character goes like, uh, "Husband, I knew Doctor Tiller. Damn it!" And I'm like, "That's a weird time for a, a name drop. I don't <laughs> yeah. think that's appropriate." Husband's just got a chalkboard. Tiller sixty thousand babies one. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Sorry, honey. I'm just keeping this thing. Don't worry oh, about it. Gore. Yeah, and we also get this line. Uh, I think it was the, the dad who says, what kind of person shoots someone in the head in church? Because that's where yeah. 
Taylor got killed. The venue is the problem? That's what you're fucking talking about? Yes! The venue of the shooting the doctor in the face by a terrorist? Where he did it is is what you focused on now. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, okay, but yeah, so it, it, then the next day at work, too, we have all the nurses talking. They're like, yeah, these Christian protesters are p- pretending to be sympathetic, but I don't buy it. And I'm like, no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You should they not. perpetuated no. the nickname Tiller Tiller Baby Killer. They have blood on their hands there. Yeah, they kept publishing his home address on their that, website. That's, yeah. that's how you yeah. know they weren't sympathetic. Pro-life asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, but Jesus. then um, Abby gets a call from HR. The, the HR needs to see her immediately in Houston, right? So she she goes to the, the baby-killing headquarters, and she gets in trouble for not wanting to kill enough babies. Right. She gets a formal reprimand, and this is, like, <laughs> supposed to be big and dramatic. Like, the movie saw this as an evil thing that companies do. They're like, reprimand. I I, I have no idea. I need you to sign your copy. You have to sign your <laughs> copy. Okay, thank you. How amazing would it be if they made her watch a training video and just will I am? Hi, welcome to Killing Babies on Schedule. <laughs> you know, it sure can be hard to tell what is right and wrong when it comes to killing babies. Isn't that right? So <laughs> Ariana Grande. <laughs> So yeah, so she's so, like she's getting all pissed off. She's like, I I can't believe you're reprimanding me. I was employee of the month, damn it! It says so on my parking space. <laughs> and the, the narrator goes, now, I know it's hard to believe that I quit just because of this. And for once, me and the narrator agree entirely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know why that's hard to believe. I don't believe that at all. <laughs> because you're lying. That's why I don't believe it. That's why it's hard to believe. <laughs> right. So now, okay, we're almost caught up with the beginning of the movie. And this is amazing because the couple behind me was realizing this out loud together as we got closer. (laughs) But while she's inside contemplating her future, abortion protester guy is standing out uh, outside. The guy who hauls away the baby slurry. And also radioactive waste in the same type of barrel. (laughs) Yes. In the big radioactive waste barrels. He comes out and the protesters are like, hey, can we pray over that fetus juice? And he's like, yeah, man, I guess. Dude, I'm just a fucking driver. <laughs> I just uh, drive the on, baby man. juice. 20 bucks. I wanted him so badly to fe- wheel out a barrel and be like, this one's urine. Do you want to do that one? <laughs> <laughs> These are there could be socks. ova in there. Where there's a good you- chance there's some ova in there or cum. You don't know. Yeah, but what he actually says, which made me very happy, the driver's like, yeah, okay, man. Um, But real quick, you want to double up and do like, the other, because I got more barrel. I got at least one more barrel. You want to do them one at a time? Because I feel like that'll be slower. I can just bring them on. You want me to run past you with a row of them, and you can be like, pray, 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 pray. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So Eli, was this the because this was the the main moment where I laughed out loud and shouldn't have when he asks to pray over the the fetus juice? Nope, nope. Mine comes a little bit later in the movie. Okay. All right. That was <laughs> that was the most embarrassing moment of laughter for me. <laughs> But yeah, this is where we catch up to the beginning of the movie. And so apparently as she was watching that baby on the ultrasound fight for its life, translucent Topher Grace abortion guy was outside praying over the fetus juice at exactly that moment. Mm -hmm. So that must have been what triggered it, you see. Yep. And then she we cut to her seeing that little pea pod fetus tapping out Morse code with the back of its head. <laughs> and she realizes the error of her ways. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Uh, All right. Uh, mine was a Johnny got his gun reference. Yours was a Star Wars. I feel like I win. OK, yep. you were the English major, but whatever. I wish the driver came back out after that with like a bunch of framed jigsaw puzzles of babies. <laughs> Like, you want to pray on these two? We're, we're done. We definitely got all of these. Or actually, oh shit, this is missing one. Can you come back in and help me? <laughs> I'm not allowed to take it if it's not done. This is <laughs> it's supposed to be done at five. This is you guys are the worst. Bullshit. You have to help me. All right. So now we cut to abortion protest headquarters where Abby's there to see him. She's like coming to the abortion protesters for witness protection against the crime family that is Planned Parenthood. Right. And again, (laughs) just for clarity, this is this movie's version of the story. The 
real version of the story, allegedly, allegedly. is she got yelled at, grabbed a bunch of records of patients and doctors who worked at her clinic and was like, hey, I'd like to switch sides. Please dox and threaten and blackmail these people. Right. And, and, and by the way, well, while that has never been fully adjudicated or whatever, someone that worked at that clinic definitely took the names of at least a couple of the doctors that worked there and provided them to this group. Right. But that could have been somebody anybody who, did it. who switched sides. Yeah, exactly. All right. So but they're going to help her any way they can, as long as she promises not to abort again. Yeah. <laughs> and she tells him the story of those sucking out videos she saw here mm -hmm. and she's like yeah no it like kicks and screams it does di dive rolls like a ninja like seriously it's all the things <laughs> you think it, it actually made a gesture like please stop at one point like and please don't put this on a big screen tv in 4k high def that'd be great <laughs> Peter's like lock eyes with me lock eyes with me circle of trust planned parenthood outside the circle it was it was pretty traumatic it's also just another lovely little detail about this. So part of the thing that American Coalition for Life did is they'd be like, hey, if you work for an abortion clinic, we'll help you. We'll find you another job. But because Abby Johnson was literally the first person ever to be this evil, when she showed up for this meeting, even she admits they didn't have a job for her. And she was like, oh, uh, you guys always said, and they'd be like, no, 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 we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, have you considered writing an evil book full of lies? And she was like, all right, evil book yeah. full of lies. Yep. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, but, but and there's this great moment where she's like, yeah, I guess I'll have to find another job. And, and the protester dude is like, I think you're underestimating Planned Parenthood. They will fucking end you. Yeah, the mafia little fetuses are going to come break her kneecaps. Apparently. <laughs> Blood in, blood out. You know it. Yeah, they have to send her out through the fucking back exit. No, no, the Planned Parenthood folks will see you, I'm sure. They've got eyes everywhere. All right, so she heads home where she finds her hubby and her daughter chilling with a puzzle, and hubby can just tell that she doesn't want to kill babies anymore. Again, this guy is either psychic or has been spying on her actively through the movie. He's like, so... You went over to that abortion headquarters and quit your job and secretly fed them a bunch of information. She's like, how did you know? And he's like, just a gut feeling. Yeah. Also microchip in your car. Yeah, No, right. Like, I feel like her husband, like, while she was writing the book, says, like, kept saying, like, well, make sure in the book it shows how psychic I am, though, because I am. <laughs> I am pretty psychic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the mouse in my theater groaned at the screen <laughs> at this point at how evil this movie is. So pro-choice mouse I had in my theater. Yeah, right, fun. right. Like a little smart Algernon. <laughs> All right, so then we cut back to the clinic. Um, and we, it's, it's hilarious because when we cut in there, we see a girl about to take her abortion pills, and I was literally bracing myself for Abby to side tackle her. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, exactly, but I... <laughs> She yeah. dives in front of and she swallows the pill instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, right. <laughs> <laughs> Start shitting chunks again immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so she's packing up her office. Should have gone hand. <laughs> Why did I go mouth? <laughs> so, yeah, so now Abby's packing up her office. Um, her friends sure are worried about her. Uh, she's here. As a matter of fact, her friend comes and she's putting all of her belongings in a box, and her friend goes, Is something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> are you no. leaving so no i just swap out all oh. my personal belongings from time to you're, time you're so good at selling the abortions uh, uh about your parking spot yeah um, <laughs> so yeah so she yep. resigns she leaves the clinic for the very last time good abortion protester of the north is very proud of her for quitting mm-hmm and then, okay, again, like telling us more than they meant to, she calls her mom to tell her the good news. And mom is so proud of her. And I'm like, huh, boy, you were in a position where your family and your husband and your child and your pastor and all of your friends would have liked you more and been proud of you if you did this. Hmm. I can only think of honest reasons why you changed your mind. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she calls and tells her mom uh, the good news. 
And then we have to have the scene where she's crying late that night as she fully comprehends all the babies she's murdered over the years. Oh, and this movie, yeah. this movie shoots itself in the dick so hard. She's like, honey, I just realized I killed like 84 bajillion babies. Do you think that our moral belief system is based on me thinking real hard and making that okay in a way that would only be justifiable if we didn't actually mean our whole conceit? And he's like, oh, yeah, don't worry. You're good. Just, you know, super best friend promise. No more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just want to repeat the number again. It was like 84 bajillion abortions that I was part of. You think that's like God wise, a bad thing? Like how many Hail Marys do you think that is? <laughs> just one. Uh, just the one. Just just do a few. Whatever. I love she says God it. loves you. The actual line is 21,000 abortions. That's the weight of my guilt. And I'm like, yeah, but most of them were like an ounce. Right. Yeah. Like they were light. So God's number is 21,001. That's where God was <laughs> like, all right, I'm drawing a line on this lady. All right. So now she goes to the abortion protester headquarters again the next day. This time she brought donuts. Also confidential patient records. We're not going to talk about that in this movie at all. Don't worry about it. It's just a... <laughs> but this is where we learn that when you intimidate women out of getting medical care, you intimidate women out of getting medical care. Yes. Oh, God, Jesus. This part <clears throat> maybe pissed me off more than any other moment in the movie. She says, like, they're like, yeah, you know, it, we started to think we were just wasting our time out there. And she just turns directly to camera and says, no, you are not. It has a very big effect. And then she cites her statistic. I don't know if this is true, but it probably something similar to it is. She says, well, we we have seen that there's a 75 percent decrease in women coming in for abortions when there's protesters outside that will yell and scream and throw blood at them. So, yes, you're making a positive difference in the world. You are literally standing between women and health care. God, Keep up the good work. A uh, great moment that happened in my theater at this point, a uh, youth leader who I yelled no bet tried to start a standing ovation, but uh, all the teenagers who at this point hated her with the fire of a thousand sons refused to join her. So this, <laughs> this little 21-year-old was like, yeah, oh, just me. All right, sitting back down. Sorry, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> One thing happened in my theater, too. This is when a uh, super intelligent pro-choice mouse stood up and was like, fuck you, <laughs> and walked out of the theater. Yeah, Pulled the Anna. All right, so but now Abby harasses women at the clinic fence and she's turned to the other side of the cage where they keep the women seeking abortions. Oh, and and again, this movie is trying so hard to put a positive spin on harassing a teenager who's there to get an abortion. Just like, "Hi, excuse me," I asked nicely. You don't have to say that part. We <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> Yeah, and this is when she explains about what they do in Nothing But Lies. This is where yep. she describes to that girl at the fence, like, well, first they do an ultrasound, but you're not allowed to ever see it. Or you'll give it a name. I think you'll give it a name. <laughs> is that like, serious? Like, they turn the screen away if you sit up? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> no. In fact, the opposite is true, which is that several states have passed laws where you have to see it. Yep. Where they make you look at the ultrasound. Yeah, and right. And they make you give it a name and, and, and sing it happy birthday. Um, Yeah. And OK. But again, so what happens in this movie, in their movie the heroic turn after the hero character has has gone through her ordeal or whatever, become a good guy. What she does is she goes and makes an innocent young girl cry for evil reasons. Yep, that's well, her chariots of fire moment. Yep. Did she also do I have this right? Did she also say that they charge more based on skull size? Yep, that they're the sizing Planned Parenthood up, clinic. They're sizing up the sizing up the baby. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> There's just a doctor weighing a fetus in his hand. Mm, I think that's oh. 250 bucks, 275. <laughs> Lady, it's like Jay Leno down there. I don't know. We're going to have to fucking, we're gonna have to rent a shop vac from Home Depot. It's, yeah, he's I the mean, father. That's crazy. I'm sure that the skull size is like the limiting factor in what kind of abortion you can get, right? So like if you have, for example, a pea pod sized embryo, 
then, you know, it's different than if you've got a large one and the skull size would be the thing that would be that determinant. But yeah, she makes it sound like it's like, yeah, it's like $14 per millimeter of skull. You ever been to Pike's Market where they throw the fish around? <laughs> that, but with fetuses. <laughs> Did you fuck that college mascot right there in the waiting room? Is that the guy? Is that the dad? Yeah. See, this is your fault. And then, okay, so she talks this girl out of getting an abortion, but then Cruella sees her out there and Cruella comes out and they have it out uh, together. And this is the part of the movie where I laughed way too loudly and way too inappropriately. <laughs> oh, was it was it during the list of who's in her corner? Yep. She goes, do you know who's in my corner? George Soros and I I laughed way too loud and everyone in the theater looked at me and I tried to turn around but my guy was ready he was like pointing he was like ah, not this time you're not getting and I was like shit nah, I saw she me. goes George Soros Bill Gates and Warren Buffett who's in your corner and first of all the character does not say God which I, I'm fucking shocked as, as cheesy as a line that is that would be how did they miss it but I'm like, how about a tax-free, opaque institution, right? Do you have a, a dark money child rape cabal? Oh, you do. <laughs> yes, right, right. You're not the little guy. This is not a David and Goliath story, lest you are Goliath. <laughs> Cut over to like a Planned Parenthood shareholder meeting. Everybody's in gold thrones. <laughs> Warren Buffett stands up, starts yelling at everyone. Coffee is for closers. So yeah, but anyway, Planned Parenthood is going to fuck her corpse if it's the last thing that they ever do. So, all right, the movie's not over yet. We we get her and her husband getting ready for Halloween. She's bitching about the last scene again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about how she's being persecuted at work. They're being mean. It's <laughs> yeah. a tone of voice persecution, and it's real. Yeah. Right. No, her friends won't talk to her anymore. It has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, you're a moralizing bitch who thinks that they're baby murderers. They probably blacklisted you at Planned Parenthood is what it is and, and got to your friends. Yes. I'm sorry. I don't get to show up for Carol's birthday and have a corner piece of cake just because now <laughs> I'm on the opposite side of women's rights. <laughs> Fucking cake day. I showed up for wing night. They were there. They saw me. They pretended I wasn't making any noise. They just pretended. <laughs> I was standing right there. <laughs> I love this. The, again, just to see how sloppily made this movie is. She's like, well, I need to call Sean, the good abortion protester man, and find Hello. out what to do next. And yeah, <laughs> right. And she calls him and she's like, wow, this doesn't work very well as a phone call. We could just do a two shot. Huh? How about you're right next to me? Oh, you are right next to me. That's how the, shot, the fucking scene plays out. Hello today. We are being sued by Planned Parenthood. For no reason. No reason at all. They were going to preemptively sue us in case we do something wrong. <laughs> but don't worry. But don't worry. Sean has retained the guy from the back of the phone book. Not one of those guys <laughs> from the middle of the phone book. The guy on the back of the phone book. That's their lawyer. Jeff Paradowski. Yeah. <laughs> He's a bus stop bench lawyer. Yeah. Like, a really good bus stop, not one of the shitty ones. Right, yeah. right. Like, I mean, I like my friend may have had mesothelioma and he got a settle. Yeah. So they go to meet their fucking phone book lawyer. And in their movie, OK, in their movie, her lawyer has to turn to her and say, did you ever take confidential patient records or the personal information of the doctors that worked in the clinic and distribute them to anti-abortion groups? And she goes, no. And he's like, weird that I would be asking that, huh? Not the kind of thing that most people have to preemptively <laughs> knock down in their own memoir. <laughs> huh. This is a weird question for us to ask then. And <gasps> the way that we set this up here in the movie seems oddly legally protected. Huh? <laughs> right? Like it's just a conversation we had as opposed to out and out saying that it's not true. In case, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. that ever comes back to bite us because we're part of a child <laughs> rape cabal. The lawyer goes, so why does everyone at the clinic say that you're lying about everything that you're saying? And she goes, because everyone but me is a liar. And the audience goes, yep, no, nope, I know how that is when everyone yep. except you is lying. <laughs> and Jeff Paradowski's like, absolutely. <laughs> OK, one more question. Have you ever done any of the stuff that uh, Abby Johnson did in real life? 
No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Are you lying? I did not. Yes. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have to work on that before we get to court. And there's this amazing moment with his catchphrase. Paradowski ran into the writer's room and sobbed and shit himself until they included this. He goes, there's two very powerful words in a court of law. Prove it. Oh, it is the second one. That's the second <laughs> big powerful word. Yeah. Did I not like totally blow your mind? Maybe sell now? it a little bit more. Prove it. Okay. It. Yeah, Prove longer ah. it definitely helps. Uh, it's, it, I it, see it, me the ball. Maybe, feels like it's maybe it's throw Thursday. the baseball into your glove one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. What if I lie uh, down? You hurt yourself. On okay. a field of gloves. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> then they go to court. Um, and I love they're walking into court and Cruella DeVadge is on the courthouse steps talking to the cameras. And Abby walks by and says, it's so unfair that I have to abide by a restraining order. And yet. All of Planned Parenthood, the institution, doesn't. <laughs> yep. She also says, I'd like to go over there and punch that woman in the face. Talking about the director lady. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then husband, the Christian good guy husband, is like, uh, honey, don't punch that woman in the face. That's my job. I'm an adult male Christian. Yeah. I punched the women around here. My audience doubled over with laughter yeah. at that line. My my audience loved it, too. They loved it. Yeah. Wow. Which, again, is why I'm super dedicated to us getting sued by Abby Johnson. Because I would <laughs> I would really love to be punched first by Abby Johnson. So well, I feel, also I the feel kickboxing like, thing. I mean, Paradowski was pretty good, but okay. Any of them. But Literally look at how many lawyers those filthy abortionists have, guys. They won't stand a chance. Jew. <laughs> <laughs> how many cuts of this movie have Jew on the cutting room a floor? Bunch. <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> Yeah, so, but then, then Cruella stops her outside the, the courthouse to talk shit about her phone book lawyer. It's the best. This movie couldn't stop from being like, I mean, yeah, Jeff Paradowski is a hack who, even if you Google him today, has a Google ad for being a personal injury lawyer. But yeah, so we, we won. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> no, but no, no, they didn't. They did not. No, okay. So the narrator cuts in after this. She goes, like, in a movie, this part would be interesting, but it like me. I mean, it is a movie in the sense that you're watching, but like we, it, we won. Well, and that's the best part is this is and credit where credit is due. This is the cleverest way a movie has ever gotten around saying we didn't win because that's not how the thing that was against us works. <laughs> yeah, no, they didn't. <laughs> the, the judge just narrowed a restraining order. Right. The judge basically went. So she already stole all the stuff and was a spy. And Pam Parenthood was like, yes, that's why we just wheeled in these boxes and boxes of evidence. And he was like, well, she already did it. What are you going to do? Restraining order narrowed down to she can't walk into your building and Whoa, steal no, any right, more right. paper. So what, what the, basically what this hearing was about, as far as I understand, and I'm, I'm certainly not a lawyer and everything, but as, I, as far as I understand, this hearing was like just about saying like, OK, but the restraining order is in effect. You cannot give out any of this information you stole. <laughs> and and then yep. the rest of the, like, the restraining order that she wasn't allowed to talk about her time working at Planned Parenthood was lifted. Yep. That's my understanding of it. And again, we won. yeah, right. It certainly wasn't a judge going like, well, you're innocent of all the charges against you. It was just was the goddamn Mull uh, the bar summary of the Mueller report is what we got here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, God, this is so it's just so awful. The lawyer has to talk shit back to Cruella, but he wasn't there when Cruella talked the shit about him. So he has this convoluted nine layers of, you know, she told me what he said. You said that I said I said when I said it. And, but despite all of that, the audience just loved it. They're like, yeah, you got her, I think. I think. And and, and the way they set that up was absurd, too. Like, the, the case ends, and everybody leaves, and then Cruella and her legal team just walk back in they're like i just i walked back in because i saw you there do, do you have any trash talk do you want to do real quick? <laughs> just checking if like anyone here something. wants to pwn me <laughs> yes right i'll be here i'll be here bent over go go <laughs> okay and then sometime later she learns that the clinic is closing now the movie would have us believe that these things are somehow related but no 
In August of 2013, an incredibly restrictive law that was later struck down by the Supreme Court was enacted in Texas that forced this clinic to close. Hooray, Uh, uterine cancer wins. And the narrator tricked us at this point, too. The narrator's like, seems like we're done. Nope. Probably (laughs) hoping the movie was over. It's not. Suck it. We're going to keep going. Well, we have to watch the Planned Parenthood get torn down, right? Oh, I, when they knocked ridiculous. it down, I wanted babies to come pouring out like a pinata. <laughs> <laughs> I was already a villain in a theater at this point, and so when everyone applauded in my theater when the when the sign came down, I yelled really loudly, "Yay, uterine cancer!" <laughs> that, that quieted the teen group down. The whole place starts exploding, like when the trap gets blown up in Ghostbusters, and fucking <laughs> demon fetuses flying out. Jesus. But my favorite part of this, though, was the bulldozer scene that they planned on doing. And then we're like, we are 100 percent out of money. We cannot yes. bulldoze shit. We're going to have the bulldozer wrap pull a chain and pull down the little sign. And that will be That's it. it. They couldn't it's afford so the bulldozer building. <laughs> They might as well just have like made their own sign and kick it over. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody, look, it's a it's a metaphor for fighting against choice. You do symbolic, terrible, mean spirited acts that are expensive and help no one. Am I right? Woo-hoo! Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, but now she's got to give a little speech where that demolished Planned Parenthood once stood. And she brought one rose for each of the fetuses that she took out hits on. And look, she's very, she's like, it's, look, I am going to meet my babies in heaven. And I, I just want to say, if she's right and we're wrong, we're not. That's going to be a super awkward meeting in heaven. <laughs> right? Wow. Heaven. Hey. Oh, my God. Are you? Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm your aborted child. Oh, honey. I I am so sorry. No, 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 no hugs. Please. Sorry. Okay. Definitely no hugs. Yeah, uh, t- too obviously. soon. Yeah. Yes. How, clearly too soon. How, how is heaven here? Oh, uh, it's, it's fine. Um, kind of would have liked to have, you know, been alive though. Um, sure. Hmm. How about you? How was the rest of college? That's, that's what you murdered me for, right? The, the rest of college. Was that fun? I, it was okay. Cool. Was cool. Glad to hear it was okay and good. Psyched for you. So we're up here together forever. Huh? Forever. Yep. Yep. Oh, forever. Hey, bitch. Okay. Who is that? Hmm. I'm 2012's Christmas blowjob, you whore. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you are. Couldn't wrap up a book, huh? Too much effort? Maybe some socks? Nothing? Oh, it would almost be worth being wrong just to know that that was what Abby Johnson had waiting for her. And for my army of jerk sock kids. Like, I could just crowd surf my way across heaven. (laughs) Wow, so you're just like in tiny little pea covered in cum form. That's weird. (laughs) Weird. Figured they would agree you out for heaven. Okay, no, that's fine. fine. Okay, I know you guys are all mad, but let me just say, a lot of the blame for this goes to a little channel known as Cinemax. <laughs> yeah, blame them. Thank you, kids. So, yeah, so she's fucking written a letter to her dead aborted babies. And then we have the pan out where, like, we see that there are so many roses for all the dead polyps. Uh, babies. Uh, yeah, but not 22,000, nope. whatever the number was. Kind of <laughs> no. a dick move to leave out some fetuses from the rose <laughs> like thing. 48. How'd they pick that? They I draft know. it. It's however however many roses they could get from that place down the street. I'm sure. Oh, um, and then <laughs> Dave, stop putting brown roses for each shit you took. Stop. <laughs> come on, <laughs> serious. <laughs> but then, okay, so the movie's over. But they have to throw this disclaimer out in case we were curious. The disclaimer goes like: Planned Parenthood did not help us at all with those this movie. Those fucking <laughs> dicks, bunch of dicks. We asked if we could use the clinic at night, and they were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even there. God. <laughs> and then they give you the number of somewhere where you can call oh, if yes. you work 
in the abortion industry and want out. And look, I'm not saying that if you're listening to this episode, you should call these people and waste a tremendous amount of their time because (laughs) I'm not allowed to. That's right. That's one of the many reasons you're not saying that, Eli. Well done. All right. <laughs> like, like they were selling the, the witness protection program. Yeah, it was so for abortion stupid. providers. Come on. <laughs> you pretend to be a fetus that's escaped. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm inside the clinic. Oh, they can hear me. Oh, stop me. Just saying. Patreon dollars, people. I'll get a burner phone. <laughs> so, all right. Before we close things off, I'm curious what you guys think. I always try to come up with a new question here. And this is the first time I've watched a movie where I would, where I honestly thought we might all have different answers here. So what would you guys say? What it, Personally, what was the most dangerous lie in this movie? Uh, okay, I'm going to go with that abortion hurts. Like, I know it seems like a super minor thing, but The message that this movie hits over and over and over again is that abortion is painful and scary because they're trying to scare women away from doing it. And there's something so horrifying about trying to make health care seem terrifying to the children that they know will be dragged to this movie that like it's the it's the worst of the worst to me. I amen to that. Heath, you got a nominee? Uh, yeah, first of all, Goonies is amazing. That's a, great movie. <laughs> That's a dangerous lie that Goonies is not delightful. Um, but yeah, most dangerous lie in this, this movie, uh, the movie, fuck this movie, the whole thing. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, I was going to go, like, I had so many that I like kept erasing and putting back. I'm going to go with that abortion protesters are perfectly justified in filming women going in and out of the clinic. Oh, that's a good one. Fucking yeah. Gross. But again, there were seven or eight other things that were swimming around my mind as possible contenders for that. Oh, yeah. We need those like actual fire hose versions of sprinklers to get like get really <laughs> serious. I want milk coming out of those things and fucking Satanists out there scaring the shit out of. Or I don't know. Xenomorph oh. blood. How about xenomorph blood? Yeah. See, we're coming up with good <laughs> ideas here. And I want to leave everyone with a message of hope because there, there was this moment when the movie ends and the lights came up. And they were all getting the church group. I, like I said, I was seated amongst these teenagers and there was a girl next to me who was like probably 15, 16 years old. And like I didn't turn to her during the movie because I know what I look like. That's gross. Um, and she she obviously was very scared and disturbed by the abortion is a blood festival parts of the movie. And so the lights went up and everyone already hated me in the theater anyway. So I turned to say something to her because I just wanted to be like, hey, Google this. I didn't even know what I was going to say. I was just going to be like, Google, please don't believe lies. It's okay." And I turn and I open my mouth and she looks at me and she goes, I'm just here for the free movies. Next month, we're going to Avengers. And I was, <laughs> and I have never been more comforted oh, by oh this. Oh my God. So that's how they get, they're going to take them to see Endgame, but you have to come see Abortion yeah. movie, this. Oh my God. They take him to a movie. That's so Christianity. Oh my <laughs> fucking God. And this <laughs> deadpan teenage girl's little face gave me hope for the future. <laughs> I was so sure she was scarred forever and she was just like, I'm in this for fucking Avengers, man. Yeah, no, I get it. I'd watch this movie. <laughs> hey, for... at least Avengers exists. So <laughs> it's not like yeah. their normal set of promises. There you go. All right, well, that's going to do it for our review of Unplanned, but it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to trick ourselves into doing this again. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Flat Earth Clues. Oh, finally, finally. We're going after the Flat Earthers? Yes, indeed. We got clues aplenty. Oh, and by the way, if you wrote in to ask us to do, what's the one that everybody on Netflix? Behind the Curve. Yeah, Behind Mm -hmm. the Curve. Okay, we're not doing that one because that one is not like a made by Flat Earthers promoting Flat Eartherism documentary it's kind of just made to make fun of them so we feel like we'd be doubling down on that we went out and and found what is considered by flat earthers to be one of the better movies the documentaries that they have like from their end oh Look. this is like the case for christ of flat earth yes yeah. exactly exactly if, if you love behind the curve you'll love flat earthers because it's behind the curve without all the sense yeah or the self-awareness <laughs> exactly right exactly it's, it's along the tangent line yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right 
right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 189 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Brian Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Martin Clark, and was used with permission. Again, I just named my fucking lawyer, Paradowski. Come at me, bro. Thanks again Please. for giving us a chunk of your life this week. <laughs> Mine went to Harvard. Where'd yours go? Probably not Harvard, though. Billboard. Anyway, for he said right, and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Warren Buffett, George Soros, and Bill Gates went on to share a Nobel Prize for inventing a substance that turns every fetus into an ice cube. <laughs> it's called Ice Nine Months. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Paradowski went on to think of a much better way to phrase that comeback minutes after he left the courthouse. Nobody associated with this movie ever got to work on a real movie ever again. Oh, I and hope so. I hope the fucking guy who drove them to the airport is blacklisted. Oh, yeah. None of you will ever work again. And I know you're listening. <laughs> they literally think that happens. Sure they literally do. think that happens, guys. There's nothing that this... There's no sketches we can do for this <laughs> No, <movie. laughs> it's post law. All right. <laughs> Jesus. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.